Okay. Hello, hello. Welcome. I am live again. Uh, we're doing another chill chatting stream, whatever. Just trying to get some work done. Today I'm doing something a little bit different, something that I have not yet done on this channel, uh, which is editing. Uh, editing some videos. I have eight videos to edit, uh, not for the main channel, not for the projector channel, but for the also projector channel. Uh, so this is going to be conversations with projector footage that we're going to edit today. And to be honest, I just want to do this on stream because um, it's either I work on this not streaming or I work on this streaming. So I thought I might as well stream it. I don't know how much people will find it interesting. But um, yeah, we'll just have to see. Also, I got a new device here. I got something interesting. It allows me to do this and this and, and back to here. So I can now control my stream without having to go over to OBS and stuff like that. So it, it should be a little bit more interactive this way. And it, I can just set things up and, you know, have transitions and stuff like that. At some point, I'm going to make a stream start screen and like an ending screen as well. So that... Um, I guess right now my streams just kind of start and I'm sitting here for like 30 seconds trying to see if everything is okay, seeing if the first people in chat are showing up, that kind of stuff. It would be nice to just have like a start screen and an end screen for those things so that I don't have to just sit here and say like, oh, is this set up? Is that set up? Is, is everything correct? All of that stuff. Um, but yeah, that that's something that I'll have to worry about later. For now, I just have the Stream Deck device and it allows me to just switch scenes right now at least that is what i have set up um i have six buttons so right now i have the ableton one the reaper one which is the camera just in a different spot uh, i might put that in like a folder or whatever i have to that i have the full cam on here and the final thing that i have is i'm able to mute my microphone as well as the side chaining to the desktop. So whenever I'm taking a break, normally I play some music and it sometimes still gets compressed and stuff like that because the microphone picks something up. Some noise, whatever, uh, maybe it's like something is outside and even then the side chaining engages. Uh, so now I have one button to just turn off my microphone and side chaining, which is a lot cleaner and therefore the music should just come through a little bit nicer. Uh, Cosmo, how are you doing? Welcome, welcome. I hope you're doing uh, well today. For those that don't know, if you're looking at my title, uh, yes, I have a sale going on on my Gumroad page right now. And you can use promo code SPRINGSALE24 to get 30% off all of my products, including my masterclass. So if I go over to my Gumroad, I can just show that, what all of the products are. I haven't finished the Vital Pack yet. I am at 90 presets right now. Um, but the new stuff is here. Uh, let's see. This is the newest one, the Base Essentials Pack. Um, obviously all of the other things also have 30% off. Including the Masterclass. All of these packs, the Mini Packs, but these are just 2 bucks, so you won't need that. The Remix Packs as well. For those that don't know, you can remix my album, and here you get a license plus all of the stems for the track. Uh, so yeah, if you're interested in any of that, you can check out the gum rounds down below in the description. Uh, it says like, check out my sample packs, something like that, and there you'll find a link to my gum road. Also exclamation points products in the stream chat will get you there, I believe. If the bot is waking up and stuff. Anyway, uh, what I have here is Premiere Pro. This is the program that I edit videos in. I have the eight videos that we need to make over here. It's taking a while to load for some reason. There we are, it just kind of crashes. You can see I already did all of the cutting and the major edit, like editing work on it, I guess. Uh, so this is the last one. Uh, this still needs one done, actually. Uh, that needs editing and cutting and stuff. Uh, but the rest is all done. And what we're mainly going to be focusing on today is just finalizing these videos. 
because uh, this is the like the initial cut the first cut of the video this is just me watching through the stream once and cutting out all of the bits that aren't interesting um for those that are wondering i can show you a finalized one as well these are longer these videos so these ones are as you can see like 50 minutes long and i think not a lot of people watch them for that reason mainly uh not mainly but that's like one of the reasons why people don't watch them is that they were too long um but this is what a finished video is going to look like as you can see there's a lot of assets that are in here a lot of like text and stuff like that and we have text to speech things and whatever and uh i don't exactly know what this is this is also a text to speech kind of thing i guess yeah but there's lots of different colors and text to speech and whatnot um and we're just going to have to do that for here so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy over the title card stuff, which is over here. I have not yet recorded my own voice for this. Uh, so normally what I do is I edit the whole thing first and then I record the voice depending on what I need to say. Because obviously when I start, I don't know yet what I want to say. For today, we're just going to start by putting in the intro here. This is just a little title card that sits at the beginning that uh, shows all of the different topics that are in the video with all of the timestamps and whatnot. I'm also going to improve this over here uh, because now we have fewer topics. I think I want to have the text a little bit bigger. Not was and mind be welcome, welcome. How are you doing? Hope you're doing well. What I'll do at the end of the stream is I'll discuss some of the topics in here. Uh, conversation topics. There is already one topic that somebody uh, requested something about. Um, you guys can add more topics to this if you want me to talk about something specific. Uh, at the end of the video, I'll just go over all of these and just discuss them so that I can put that in a future video as well. To be honest, I'm probably a little bit behind on the conversation stuff like i have three four more streams that i could be editing uh, but this is the kind of editing right now that to me doesn't really yet seem beneficial because i think it won't really work well on the new channel either to be honest this is kind of like my passion content i like this kind of content um uh, first of all i'm the kind of person that would watch this kind of content right the conversation stuff just getting to know a person just like little parts of a stream where something somebody is really talking about like opinion and stuff like that as opposed to actual a full production stream to get an idea of their actual production methods and stuff like that so this is the kind of content that i would personally like to watch and secondly i like the idea that people get to know me better through this content um how long usually uh edits of one entire stream takes it depends a little bit on the, for one, the length of the stream and two, the length of the useful clips. So for these two streams that I have edited over here, I had one and a half hours of video each that I could edit together into something interesting. For these ones over here, I think it was much less. I think here it was just like an hour. Uh, this is the 15 minute one. I believe there's, yeah, like, there's like a 43 minute one. Yeah, here it was, I think, even less than an hour. The second thing that it's going to depend on is just my energy throughout the stream. Because if I'm very high energy and if I'm very good at explaining stuff that day and if I'm very good at talking that day, it's a lot easier because I have to do much fewer cuts. So you'll probably find that some parts here, for example, like, look at this. There's many more cuts in here, in, in like this part over here, for example, and this part over here, than there is later on and earlier on and in different parts of here. If we zoom out, you can see there's fewer cuts here than there is over here and this stuff over here. All of that comes from the amount of energy that I have, comes from the topic that I'm talking about, comes from the different, um, just I guess, just the way that I'm speaking uh has to do with that so it's not i cannot give you like a number that is just 
satisfactory and I would say, uh, yeah, that is exactly how long it takes. I would say take the stream time and double it. So if a stream is four hours long, I'm probably taking eight hours to edit it. But now I am getting better at the editing as well. I'm getting faster. I'm getting the, the, the workflow down more. So for example, one of the things as you can see me do is I just copy over different parts from here, right? And I can just use that in here. So if I need some text on the screen, I already have the text over here. In this case, this is the Reaper version because it's on the left here. So I want to have the Ableton version. Uh, that means that I need to probably open up another project. Um, I was hoping I would have one that is on the, the right, but I don't. So we're just going to open up a different one. Okay. Yeah, here you can see I have the text on the right. So I just have that prepared already. One of the other things that you'll notice is that in this initial cut, I have colored different clips. So I know that in this clip over here, I need to put in text. Back when I started doing this, I didn't do that. So I would need to watch the whole, I, I would cut the whole thing and I would put in the text as I was going. So I would do everything in one go. But now doing it twice, it's much faster already because now I don't have to spend time or I, I can just focus on the cutting part. And then the second time around, I just focus on all of the assets and all of the text and all of that stuff. So the way that this is going to work is I'll need to find which text needs to show up here in the stream or in the on the, the screen. And uh, I do actually need to find that on the stream. First of all, I like to line it up. So here is the end of the text. So I'm just going to take these keyframes over here and put them there. This is just here for the mask which is the thing that makes the background a little bit darker. You can see the difference here behind the text. It makes the text pop out a little bit more and it just makes it easier to read what is happening here because there's whatever is happening behind it kind of sits in the background because it's like blurred out and darker. Um, I do have the streams open here. This should be the first one. Yeah, I just look at the color of the shirt that I'm wearing to see if it's the right one. And we'll see where we Thanks. are. The video is very interesting, the way that we did it. It's, I believe this is very early on. Uh, so I'll look for some text that I see over here. One of the reasons why I like having my stream chat on my screen is because then from here, I can see roughly where we are in the video. And I can see here, somebody is talking about uh, the beta for 12, right? So I have my stream on my third monitor here. Uh, right now it, it doesn't show the chat because it clears it. But if I go like here somewhere, we should be able to match that text. Right? So this is the text that I'm looking for because that is the same text that is up here. Uh, the the human uh, message. It's annoying that the chat clears if you resize the screen. Anyway, it does mean that a little bit below that there should be the text that I'm looking for, which is this glyph one over here. Let me see if I can select it properly. Eternal Garden is a really great track. I like the vibe and the video too really trippy. Thanks. The so that is the text that we have. I can then just go in here and Try to align the text there and not there here, maybe. Yeah, something like that. I like to have it just look easy to read, right? Where it's not like one is very long and then there's a short one and then there's a long one. The next step that we then have to do is make sure that this mask sits around the text so that the effect of the background uh, being blurred out and being darkened is actually encompassing the whole text. And now we have Eternal Garden is a really great track. I like
It should come in. It's a really yeah. great track. I like the vibe and the video too. Really trippy. Thanks. The video. Okay, perfect. So that's what I have to do. And now for all of the green ones, I have to put in text. And for all of the pink ones, I have to put in text plus text to speech uh, recreation of the chat message, essentially. Sometimes what I have to do uh, is even here, I have to like capitalize different things. I just dress it up a little bit uh, to make sure that the message is easy to read for the viewer. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter if the message is exactly the same as what people said in... Um, that's not a nice frame there. What people said in the actual stream. At the end of the day, when it comes to these videos, the important thing is if people can understand the flow of the video and the flow of the conversation that is happening. Are you Scandinavian? No, I'm Dutch. That it's uh, here. I for some reason missed a cut. This also looks like it should be cut out properly. And to be honest, I'm added to Ableton. And to be, to be honest, I'm that end doesn't really do anything for the conversation, so it just gets cut out. Anyway, we'll have a look at the text that we need here. If Ableton Roar is a beast, Roar is a beast. This will be later than uh, the last thing that we talked about, which was the Eternal Garden thing. Uh, I own Trash 2. Uh, God is very cheap. This is later on. Let's see if I can find Trash 2 in the preview here on YouTube. I cannot show everything because if I go back and forth, um, the messages disappear for me. But now I can scroll a little bit lower and see if I can find it. I can also control F roar. If you have Ableton Roar as a beast, I don't have a just need this part over here. Again, you'll see the actual message was like this. The LOL does not need to be there. Uh, we want to have a dot at the end. Uh, there was a part that I didn't copy before it, uh, but fuck Isotope, I don't need to have that in there. It doesn't really do anything for the video and, and having curse words in there is not necessary. Um, so we'll align this over here. I just align so that the text disappears before I start talking again. Uh, sometimes I like to do it undercut, on the cut, sometimes I don't. And then we just have to copy over these keyframes over here and send this right there. If you have Ableton Roar as a beast, I don't have Ableton. If you have Ableton Roar as a beast, okay. Now we just go here, 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 and there, so that it's not too big. If you have Ableton Roar as a beast, I don't have Ableton 12 yet. I'm not yet convinced that it's the upgrade that I want it to be. I've complained for a long time about several features that I would like to see added to Ableton. To be honest, I'm really happy with what FL Studio 11 is allowing me to do. There's probably some cool stuff in 12. FL Studio? What FL Studio? Yeah, this should probably be corrected here. Um, gonna do just a quick text thing somewhere. What FL Studio? Okay, so just for the FL Studio part, we want this. What FL Studio 11 is allowing? Okay, let's make sure that that's neatly aligned and in the spot where it doesn't obstruct 
my face and such, what FL Studio 11 is allowing me to do. There's probably some cool stuff in 12, but for now it doesn't yet feel like it's worth the upgrade. Maybe once 13 comes out, I'll like upgrade every other version, maybe something like that. Uh, but for now, I don't yet see the appeal of Ableton 12, but also that may change in the future and I might start using that as well. Uh, the find similar neural stuff is great too, new MIDI stuff, a bit under whelming if you're already at max for if you're already a max for life junkie i don't identify it as either oh i pressed the wrong button there that was the stream that you heard there is now three projectors <laughs> that are able to speak there's me there's the me from the stream and then there's the me from the stream that i'm watching to get the text from <laughs> which is interesting uh here i probably want to cut a little bit stuff a bit un to be honest, I would probably want to text to speech a this. A bit underwhelming if if I don't get a nice flow out of it. Underwhelming if you're already at me. if you're already if you're already if you're already a max for life junkie. Uh, the find similar neural stuff is great too. New MIDI stuff a bit underwhelming if you're already a max for life junkie. Yeah, so this isn't great. Uh, I'll show you guys how I do the text to speech as well. I'll find the thing that he was talking about mm. I had just found it but it's here there we are okay so the text to speech that I use is just this natural readers here and I can just drop in the text here. First of all, I'll again kind of uh, dress it up a little bit so that it's ready to be put in the text that appears on screen. Right now, I also have a instance of Ableton open on my second monitor, the one that is over there. And I use that to record my desktop audio. So I can just hit record here, play. The find similar neural stuff is great too. New MIDI stuff a bit underwhelming if you are already a max for live junkie. Okay, so now we have the text to speech. And this is just going to be much easier to hear than the way that I'm pronouncing it in the stream. Uh, the find similar neural stuff is great too. New MIDI stuff a bit underwhelming if you're already a max for live junkie. Right, that's not really easy to listen along to. And when it comes to the conversation, that's obviously something that you want. Now I can just crop clip inside of Ableton and then drag and drop immediately into here. Uh, what we'll do is we'll remove these three clips, lengthen this out again, so that it's just one thing without any cuts. And the text neatly fits into there. So I can just find this here and here. I do believe that I have, okay, not in this one, in some later ones, for some reason, halfway through the stream, my microphone volume went up. Uh, so here you can see it, the, the difference in volume between this clip over here, which is very big. And if I make it a little bit bigger, it should be easy to see. This is the volume in some parts of the stream, and then this is the volume in other parts of the stream. I don't know which is better, which is supposed to be my volume, where I'm easier to hear. Maybe for this one, sometimes I distort a little bit. All of that is actually something that I should probably just figure out and have like one standard for. But as you can see, it can apparently change halfway through the stream. So <laughs> even if you find a standard, that's probably not uh, going to hold. Now that I have my stream deck, though, it should be a bit easier. Anyway, I'm going to put the text in here and then we'll just go like this. When it comes to editing on stream the reason why i'm doing it now is because this doesn't go up on the youtube uh, on the projector channel but the also projector channel because i have early access for patreons on my Patre on the projector channel i don't want to sit here edit something on stream and give some people that watch the stream earlier access still than the patreons do i, I think that that's a little bit of a strange way of doing things uh, i need to get that text back let me just put that back here all right 
Now we'll just put that in here. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah, I'm trying to get as much length out of it as possible. Uh, this one would be maybe like that. And Max for Life Junkie. Yeah, that looks nice. Or maybe I do it like this. I have to delete actually all of the spaces there so that it's neatly aligned. And now here, this one a little wider. It doesn't have to be this precise, obviously, like it doesn't have to exactly sit under it. I just don't like it when there's like a very big area around it for some reason. Why does it? Huh? Can I just edit the points, please? Thank you. You'll see me getting very frustrated with this program. That's normal. That's the just the normal experience inside of Premiere. For anybody that edits, they know that Premiere Pro sucks in terms of their design and the way that it works. <laughs> so that is just part of the, the, the editing process as well. The fine similar neural stuff is great too. New MIDI stuff a bit underwhelming if you are already a Max for live junkie. Yeah, I understand. To me, I never... I see it like this way. I never had any issues finding the files that I need. Okay. I never have an issue with delay compensation and bounce in place is already in 12. This doesn't actually have to be text to speech. This can just be normal. The way that I'm reading it out, it should be fine. Should be easy enough to follow. We'll put that there and let me just get that text. I did see that before. Um, I never had here. And then we just put that in there again. The dot can be removed here. Okay, let me just check, yeah, so this needs to be there and there, video as well, I never have an issue with delay compensation and bounce in place is already in 12. Fortunately, unfortunately, the thing didn't quite work there. It needed to be compensation, of course. We'll just make this a bit bigger, like so. I never have an issue with delay compensation and bounce in place is already in 12. Premiere Pro, to be honest, has a very strange way of, of always doing the thing that you don't want it to do. I don't know if there's like a technical term for it in design, but it's it, it feels like the software is always fighting you for your intentions, right? When it comes to Ableton, the thing that I like the most about Ableton and why I don't want to switch to any other DAW in the future, even like Bitwig, which I know for a fact is just a better piece of software, is whenever I'm in Ableton, it feels like Ableton always allows me to uh, quickly get my ideas into the DAW. This program is the exact opposite. Anytime that you have an idea where you say, oh, I quickly want to change this, I quickly want to change that, it always finds a way to maybe pop up a menu or to have you select a different thing, like right here. If you sit like this, sometimes when you click here and you, for example, like have the mask open, it's... It, 
it would be intuitive if you click the text, it just edits the text, but you have to click out of it and then you have to click on the text and then you can edit the text. But if you can always edit the text by clicking on it, unless you have a mask selected, then your muscle memory kicks in and you start clicking. And then in this case, I actually moved the thing around and only then did I actually realize, oh, you have to click out of it to edit the text. Bounce in place is not in life 12. Because there is a massive debate about. Because there is a massive debate about bounce in place. What bounce in place is, is that you have a MIDI clip over here and you right click bounce in place and then it just makes an audio track with the audio render right here of this particular MIDI clip. What well said. Anyway, uh, over here, I probably have to do some new text to speech. Let me see what the topic I think I'll is. Ever learn to use Reaper and Ableton in the way you do. Reaper seems too advanced to learn all the features, and I don't think my brain can handle all the features. Finally, you can actually hear my voice break down here. <laughs> uh, let's see. Again, I have to format the text here. Capitalize different things, of course. Uh, a dot at the end. Uh, I don't think. I will ever learn to use Reaper and Ableton in a way you do. Dot. Reaper seems to add advanced to learn all the features. I don't think my brain can handle all the features. Okay, and record that in once again. I don't think I ever will learn to use Reaper and Ableton in the way you do. Reaper seems too advanced to learn all the features. I don't think my brain can handle all the features. Okay, I'm going to change that ever so slightly so that the ever is behind there for some reason this does not work uh, I'll show it again here I wanted the ever to be behind there will uh, so I'm getting used to my new keyboard that I just got today can you guys hear less of the keyboard now And here I'm just going to say it all so that it doesn't repeat the same thing twice. I don't think I will ever learn to use Reaper and Ableton in the way you do. Reaper seems too advanced to learn all the features. I don't think my brain can handle it all. Okay. Drop clip. And then we just yoink this in here. Here and there. Oh yeah, I turned. Oh, apparently, sometimes if you just hit the delete button, it just doesn't. Yeah. Sometimes it just ignores your commands. Okay. Um, we'll have to delete this over here and delete this. That's a ripple delete, by the way, for those that are wondering, you can delete stuff and make it automatically move everything that you're deleting in terms of time. Kind of like how you can insert and delete time in Ableton. If I press control Q, it's the normal delete. And if I press control shift Q, uh, it's ripple delete for me. Uh, hey, I just wanted to say thank you for bringing such good tutorials and content. It really helps a lot. Thank you. I'm glad that you enjoy them. And I hope that you'll continue to do so. That's very interesting. Uh, I need to put the text in here again. Let's get the longest one here. This one. And then again, we'll have to line up uh, the keyframes over here. 
this just determines when it goes on and off. I wanted to, instead of cutting, I wanted to fade on and off. So for this one, you can have a fade. I don't think you can have a cross dissolve on um, adjustment layers and have that actually work. I think you have to do it this way. If you can, it would be much faster because I don't have to then enter the thing here and, and move this around. I can just move or, or lengthen the clip because this is linked to the end of the clip, whereas this is linked to the time inside of the clip. So if I make this longer, you can see it just makes the clips longer. It doesn't move it towards the end. If there is a, a more efficient way of doing that, that would be nice. But I don't think there is. Okay. Now we can just see if we can find the right spot to. Uh, preferably, I don't cut the words in half. Yeah, but I just hit enter a bunch of times until I find the exact right spots. I want learn here and then this here. I'm not a fan of the two reapers here, but I don't think that there's much that I can do there. That's not the biggest problem. Um, I saw you came last year to Burning Mountain Festival here in Switzerland. Are you coming this year too? Yes. Yes. I haven't made like any announcement yet of the festivals that I'm going to this year. I'm going to at least two that I've already booked. Um, but what I want to do is I, for those that are interested, uh, at some point I'll just throw on the Discord and maybe even make a community post about meeting people and meeting you guys at festivals because it's kind of like the conventions for the side trends fans right like how the the all the um the gamers go to like game cons and 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 that kind of stuff and and e3 and whatnot uh, we go to festivals so that's where my viewers are going to be uh <laughs> where they're going to be hanging out so yeah for that reason uh, i want to post in advance the one the festivals that i'm going for uh, right now I have two. One of them is Burning Mountain. The other one will be Wow, uh, Wow in uh, Central Italy. I've booked my tickets for both of them. I might book a couple of more. Uh, I might not. I'll have to find out. Uh, but I'll just have to see. I don't mean like doing a meetup like an actual organized meet and greet, but for those for the people that are you know fan of mine that they feel comfortable like coming up to me i guess because the last time i went i was approached two times and there were a lot of people that said like had i known that you were there i would have looked for you right so it it i don't mind being recognized and stuff like that um strange people you know, walking up to me and, and greeting me and such. I don't mind any of that. Um, so for that reason, I want to announce in advance, like, I'm here. Feel free to walk up to me. Feel free to say hi. Uh, feel free to look for me. And, yeah. That's very interesting because they're both very different DAWs. Is the quality of... <laughs> to me, the quality of my speech that when I'm speaking here, <laughs> I can hear a lot more... <laughs> the higher quality my own voice than I hear it from the stream. But for you guys, the quality of, of what you hear over here is the same as what I'm currently speaking, I guess. I expected you to actually record you playing a DJ set, not just the audio mix, waving your hands in the air and, and screaming, yeah, come on. Yeah, so that needs to be a... Uh, text to speech here. Expect you to actually record you playing a DJ set, not just the audio mix. Dot waving your hands in, waving your hands in this. Okay, how does this sentence go? Is just waving your hands in the air and screaming "Yeah, come on!" is not really like a proper sentence. I think like this, right? This should be proper English. I think so. We'll have to see how the text-to-speech is going to react to the, the quotes and the 
exclamation point and such. Normally, I don't put that in there. I expected you to actually record you playing a DJ set, not just the audio mix. As in waving hands in the air and screaming, yeah, come on. It's not really happy with the yeah, come on. It's not really sh shouting it, but I guess that's what you're going to get from... Uh, I could just use the first bit. At the end of the day, for the video, it doesn't really matter if people hear that second bit. I think that's what I'll do. I'll just put in the first bit of text here. Because that's essentially what I'm talking about, right? I think that won't cause any issues. I think you didn't watch the video I did on the DJ set. Because I actually did do that. But it's it, I'm not releasing that. <laughs> At least not now yet. Because the place where I'm recording, it doesn't look good. Like, I don't have a nice... Um, back like set for that, right? Even here. Okay. I think that will work if I just use the text over here. Uh, now I can go here and line that up. Cut this bit out over there. I expected you to actually record you playing a DJ set, not just the audio mix. I think you didn't watch the video I did on the DJ set. Yeah, that should work. Nice. Um, we need the text thing. But I also look for if the same text doesn't appear over here. Usually I'm so late with responding to chat messages uh, and with the delay and such. It doesn't... The text that is actually being said doesn't show up in here. But I don't want that to happen because if I do edit it like I do now, the people will see that I'm just responding to like half the thing. Or that I put in half the thing. At the end of the day, I don't know how much that will matter. Uh, this is not aligned yet. And now we need the mask to be there and... I expected you to actually record you playing a DJ set, not just the audio mix. I think you didn't watch the video I did on the DJ set, because I actually did. Okay, next one. Any 8-bit consoles as... Something about 8-bit, I'll be able to find that pretty easily. Wait. Have you played any... Ah, here. Down here. There were two questions by this guy concerning 8-bit, and I was looking at the wrong one. I was like, that doesn't look anything like the thing that I just partially heard. This might be... Yeah, mask can be a little bit thinner here. This is, to be honest, I don't think that the the mask, the way that I'm editing it now, if it's already like that, it really matters. It's just that I'm a little bit of a perfectionist when it comes to my content. I think every YouTuber is. We always want to have the that extra 5%. Even in music, right? Everybody masters their music and, and tries to get the best out of the best out of the best to get that last 5%. When in reality, the thing that matters is that 80% of just the general content that you put in here. Like, it doesn't matter how exactly the mask looks around the text here. That's not going to make or break the video. What is going to make or break the video is the way that it's edited and the, the topics presented and just the way that I present my opinion and that kind of stuff. That should be the interesting part of the video. Okay, stuff like that. Any favorite game music? Yeah. So here I really quickly respond to it. In that case, I'll leave the text on it a little bit longer. Even though the text itself here is very, very small, it's very, very short. You can see how long it takes for the text to come in already. We can move this maybe a little bit like that. Any favorite? Yeah, but I, I do want to give people enough time to actually read what is being said, right? So here we'll have to, again, move the mask to something like this. This. 
that. Any favorite game music? Yeah, of course. Then the Minecraft music is my favorite game music because that's the music that I grew up on. Also, it, I do think that it's just very good music. Uh, at least the I think if I just like to show you, put this here and here that this is way too short to actually read yeah. the text. Any favorite game music? Yeah, of course. Then Right, so that's why I keep it longer here. The Minecraft music is my favorite game music because that's the music that I grew up on. Also, it, I do think that it's just very good music. Uh, at least the old stuff that C418 wrote. I'm not... Okay, uh, so this is the first one almost done. I want to put in the outro bit here. And then the only thing that I'll need to do for this one is recording the voice part. And maybe what I'll do is reorganize some of the topics. Right now, let's see if I can yeah, go here. Um, we are editing the version 9 here. Uh, are there things in here that I cannot show? Yes, there are. Sorry, I just have to remove some things here. And I'll remove everything now. Normally, I just keep all of my text documents open here in the uh, Sublime text thing. Um, but right now, we did this bit over here. Uh, so this will be the, the, the way that the topics go. Uh, what I look for is a very interesting first topic. So right now, I do think that we have that, uh, how the conversations with projectors started, especially if this is one of the first videos that go into the second YouTube channel, it is nice to have like an explainer of what the content actually is for people. Uh, but this is, it says episode nine over here, uh, and I have an episode eight as well. Each episode turned out to be four episodes because the stream were so long that I decided to split it up into bits of, uh, as you can see, between like 15 and 20 minutes. I want to have each video. I don't want to have hour long videos anymore of this kind of thing. For one, I think, as I said, people aren't watching it enough. And two, if I have four videos as opposed to one video, that's just better because more videos is better. Uh, you get more views, you get the, the channel growing quicker. So um, let's see. To be honest, when it comes to the topics here, it, it should be okay. The way that it's it's set, as I said, the, the first topic should be interesting, and I think we have that. Uh, so I'm also going to leave this up here somewhere. This is talking about the thing that it's... That I've opened today is the high tech from scratch, transformed into conversations with projector. Yeah, so this talks about how conversations with projector started. So I'm just going to take that little text over there, and then I can go... Oh, I first need to make the timelines. Text. See, now it, it just randomly opens a panel there. Uh, it doesn't yet show me. Yeah, there we are. I need to make the, the timestamps over here. So the first one is 0, 15 seconds. Right, because the intro is always 15 seconds. I'm going to make it so that I'm going to fill it up completely here. What I'll either do is speak a little bit more or so that I speak full the 15 seconds or I'll have uh, some background music in here because in, for example, this one over here, you can see there is this big gap where there's nothing happening, no audio whatsoever. Here there's complete silence, which is just very awkward. And this is something that people would probably um, click out of because there's nothing like stimulating them, right? So they, they, they would say, oh, this is the, the start of the video and immediately it's not really interesting. There's just that space in the video. But the reason why it's 15 seconds is so that you can see this wall of text that I have in here. Which even now, that should be come better. I might consider turning this down to 10 seconds now that we only have like six, seven topics per video. Just allows me to shorten the intro by one loop here because I have this like background loop in here that is like a nice little visual thingy. I 
I wish you could change the scrolling speed by holding like control if you hold control that it would zoom in faster or alt because alt doesn't do anything if you hold it. I think you have to hold alt to zoom in, yeah. It would be nice if you could hold another modifier to make it go faster. Because I often find myself having to zoom in and out very, very far. And even now I... Yeah. I don't know. Um, so let's get in the timestamps. I just have to see the start of each thing here. Uh, 258. And I just write down the timestamps in the topics. My thoughts on Ableton 12 is at 04.42. I have a leading zero for all of the timestamps that start with a single digit because uh, it looks nice that way. Everything is aligned that way. 12.02 here. And then, oh, I'm missing a topic. I have my recent DJ sets have been misunderstood. Dot fifty eight, and then I can just copy over the title card here, and then we'll move on to the next one, which is thirteen dot fifty nine. Okay, so now I have the text for the intro. And the only thing to do for this video before it becomes the final video is to record my voice uh, and to make the thumbnail for it. I usually do those things at the same time because uh, I, for the thumbnail, I have me as a person in there. Can you update, please, so that I can edit you? Thank you. Great piece of software. Fantastic. Anyway, as you can see, we have many or, or much less in terms of the topics. So I can up this probably to like maybe 70, maybe even 80. Yeah, now everything is nicely and neatly aligned. Uh, I'll move it a little bit lower like this. And I might... Yeah, make the stroke six maybe it's hard to see because it doesn't immediately update yeah that looks good okay so that's the first one done how long did that take like an hour ish yeah okay uh, i'm gonna take Let's start actually by putting all of the intros in there. That way it should be a little bit faster. I have this snap magnet thing where you can see the little arrows popping up. That means that it's snapped to the thing here. Oftentimes the snapping is variable like depending on how zoomed in you are it either works very well in that it it when you get close to it it automatically snaps to it but it doesn't snap to it from so far away that it becomes annoying um sometimes it snaps just if you're very very precise like we had in this case and sometimes it doesn't snap to it whatsoever with the snap turned on with the snap and timeline feature here here you can see I have to do something else with maybe like a graphic or something. That's the, the blue color. It's just the coding that I'm using for. Yeah, you can see I decided I tried to snap it to it and it just stopped one frame before. Why? Who designed that? Why would you with the snapping turned on not just snap to the thing that <laughs> I'm trying to snap to here? This one has very few stuff that I actually have to do. Interesting. Here again, you can see it takes me a while to actually get there. Yeah, this one has much more stuff. 
happening. I guess it just depends from conversation to conversation. Probably today is not going to be a stream that will end up in the conversations. I'm just streaming because why not? And um, maybe later, maybe later some people join in the chat that talk a little bit more. Uh, but it seems to be not the most interesting stream that I could provide. Obviously, I'm known for music production, so if I'm not doing that, maybe people uh, won't stay here so much. Uh, the main reason, actually, why I'm streaming is just so that I can have the Gumroad sale like advertisement in my title, and people will be reminded of that fact that they can uh, purchase my products and uh, make better music that way. Game Boy Z, how are you doing? Welcome, welcome. It sounded like there was a, a phone buzzing, but my phone is right here, so it's it's not mine. Maybe the, the, the downstairs neighbors or something like that. This apartment is very noisy. If their phone plays something, I can hear it. Not so much the people below me, I think, but the people next to me. If Also, if they're speaking, it, it's like there's no wall there. Great, how are you? Um, I'm doing okay. Just some chill editing here. Uh, do you use CapCut? No. This is Premiere Pro. I have no idea what CapCut is. The all-in-one video editor and graphic design tool. Yeah, so there's a different video editing program. This is uh, Premiere. So this is also video editing software. It's just a different one. Let's see. If you would be asked to write some tracks for Minecraft, what would they be like? I mean, the vibe that they're currently having is kind of what I would go for. Honestly, our first... The first topic isn't that good. The second topic, however, am I dedicating my life to Cytons, is probably a good topic thumbnail-wise. So it might be a good idea to have that as our first topic. Meaning I can just move this behind here and it should all align if I do exactly this. Yes. And now all I have to do is move these three forward, this one backwards. And just take the title here. And now we just switch them around in here as well. Otherwise, I forget that. Um, so yeah, let's get our text element back. As I was saying before, I know for a fact that uh, this stream is not the most interesting part, uh, or the reason why I'm talking so much about that is I need to continue talking for this stream to be remotely interesting because realistically not a single person that tunes into this stream is actually interested in editing right i'm hoping to see with this stream how many people are just interested in me as a person and how many people will just stick around maybe ask me questions have try to have conversations with me if all that there is to my content is just me and not the music production stuff that I do. I've talked about this many times before, how I kind of hate, not really hate, but I, I dislike the fact that it seems that a vast majority of the people who are subscribed to my YouTube channel, the channel that uh, represents me as a person, um, only really seem interested in the information that I know and not so much as me into me as a person. Why not uh, using CapCut? Music and art equals same. I, I, I'm sorry, it's a little bit hard to follow what you're saying uh, because of the delay. I don't know if you're still talking about CapCut or something else. 
this is all going to be fixed in the new apartment. <laughs> I, I've mentioned it before. This apartment doesn't allow me to have the high latency or the low latency streams. So we'll have to do it with a little bit of higher latency, meaning that if you type something in response to me, for me, that thing happened like a minute ago. And I've already continued talking for another minute. I speak about the stream. Yeah, as I said, many people, from what I've noticed, is anytime I do something really like personal or something like that, it just gets fewer attention. Like the conversations with Projector video series, which is the, 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 the old ones, not the ones that I'm editing now, but the old ones that are up on the main channel. Fewer people watch them than any of the tutorials. I would get a thousand views per tutorial, every single tutorial. And then any time there were, was a conversation with Projector in the middle, it would get 400 views maximum. So that is a, a little bit annoying that that happens. You know what I mean? Um, I need to see which text this is. Do you feel like sidelines is something you might want to dedicate your life to, or it might change? Do you feel like sidelines is something you might want to change, dedicate your life to, or is that something that might change? We have that over here. Interface not updating. There we are. We'll take this from. Side trends will capitalize that, or it might change here. This here and here. Better make mastering video. Mastering Google got best algorithm for mastering and mixing. I have no idea what you mean. Google isn't a mastering engineer. What? <laughs> If you're if you say like oh just make a video about this topic and people will care more, it's not that simple. At the end of the day, what I, what I said to how to do in 2024 is make my YouTube channel more a little bit more about me, right? That is what I started or decided to do with the conversations with Projector. It's just like an insight in my life, the things that I talk about on stream, which is me, me as a person, right? Do you feel like Sidelines is something that you want to dedicate your life to, or it might change? is not something that is going to come up in any of my tutorials. But it's a nice personal thing that some people may want to know about me. I thought, at least. And it, it just doesn't seem like that idea is there. It's not that I'm unhappy with the amount of views that I get. Although I do think having a series on your main channel that consistently gets lower views will also take down your other videos. Right, your other videos get less... Um, impressions initially because YouTube says like every once in a while you just have a bad video so therefore your channel isn't really that established yet um, so for that reason it is good to at least separate it but I was hoping that more people would be interesting interested in me as a person than that there are or it might change now at this point I am pretty happy with where I am in okay I have this one. And that's also the reason why I'm doing this stream over here. It is a Saturday, so a lot of people are free from work and uh, a lot of people uh, should have the time to join in the stream. But I can say already, an hour in, that this is not going to be my best stream ever. I'm very low in terms of the amount of viewers that I'm getting uh, on my stream for Saturday. So it's already confirming my suspicions in that, again, people just care a little bit less about me as a person than the content that I make, which is just something that you have to accept at some point, right? And that is what I'm doing now. I'm editing this 
for a different channel, not for the projector channel anymore. It's going to go on a different channel so that the people that are actually interested in this kind of content can actually, um, you know, find it and, and still watch it without it messing up the performance of my main channel. I mean that when you upload video about mastering, you get more views and it's important because it's active new user for the death genre. Are you saying Cytrans is dead? <laughs> is, is, that, is that your <laughs> claim here? Because I don't think it is. But yeah, if I would make a mastering related video, that would get probably a decent amount of views. Uh, it, it would need it, it would depend on whether I have something to talk about in regards to mastering. Mastering is not the end all be all of uh, many people do think that, but at the end of the day, with the mastering, you just do the loudness. So, what I would talk about is hey, if you master a track, make it louder. Okay, Cytrans, yes, Cytrans, in my opinion, is very much still alive. It is alive and I think growing. Full or not? I mean, I, to be honest, I don't see why it's dying or something like that. Like, this over here doesn't seem like a dying genre to me. If you look at the size of the crowd over here. Let's wait for it to load. Again, new apartment will just have this load instantly. This doesn't look like something that nobody is interested in. Right? And this is full-on Psytrance that is being played here. Uh, on this festival. This boom festival. There's loads of full-on Psytrance being played there. And there's many, many people that show up to actually listen to it. So Cytrans isn't dead by any means. No. I wouldn't say that. Uh, we have to text-to-speech here again. For the... Here. If you'd be asked to write some tracks for Minecraft, what would they be like? When it, by the way, when it comes to just getting views and stuff like that, it's not so simple as, oh, just mention mastering in the title and people will come. At the end of the day, I have to be able to make good content out of a topic. If I decide I'm going to capitalize on the, to on, on, on the topics and I'm only going to cover the topics that get the maximum amount of views, I'll be spending the rest of my life talking about Cytrans baselines, and there's just not so much that you can talk about in regards to the baseline, because at some point you're just going to, you know, find that you've said everything that there is to be said, and there's no new information in the video. And the same is true for mastering. Right now I don't have anything to master. Um, I have one track to master. But maybe when it comes to my album, where I have to master 10 tracks again, or consecutively, that may be the part where I actually learn something interesting, something new that I can show and that I can explain. But when it comes to mastering, the main thing that you'll probably find if I make a video about mastering is that I'll say, like, wake up. It's not about mastering. If you're still thinking that mastering is actually improving your track in any way, it's not. It's just making it louder. If your track isn't good in the mix, if it isn't good in the production, then no master is going to change that. Completely blends into the background, doesn't stand out. Okay. This is probably good enough for just the text on screen. Yes. 
Wait, did I not change the other one then? Or is the other one also like this? Aha! It seems that they both fit in the same mask. Stuff nice. Completely blends into the backgrounds, doesn't stand out. Exactly. Yes. And that's the vibe that they... I don't think I want these to be questions. Maybe slash doesn't stand out. Completely blends into the backgrounds, doesn't stand out. Exactly. Mm. Completely blends into the backgrounds, doesn't stand out. Exactly. Yes. And that's the vibe. I don't like that either. Completely blends into the backgrounds, doesn't stand out. Stuff. Completely blends into the backgrounds, doesn't stand out. Exactly. Yes. And it's because I'm not really turning that into a new sentence. I guess. Right? The <laughs> I'm just... It's like I'm both... Stopping to speak there and not stopping. It's it's also not a full sentence, I guess. That makes it harder as well. Let's see what we have over here. So far, do you enjoy shooting slash editing or is it like a jobs slash chore? It's definitely a chore. You guys can probably tell from this stream. So far, do you enjoy editing, sh shooting slash editing? I think I say the slash in here, so I can probably leave that in. Allow me to edit the text, please. Thank you. <laughs> or is it like a job slash chore? Again, check the mask. That should be okay. I'm probably not going to move it slightly to the left if it's like this. As long as it fits, it's okay. And as long as if it's not way too big, that's okay. Or is it like a jobs slash chore? It's going to depend from edit to edit. Uh, the shoots I like, I like what I want it to be. I also don't like the term content maker. Con Do I not respond to the follow-up question? Even for money. Of the editing someone else's video, even for money, maybe. Okay, yeah. I do answer that question, but much later. I'll need to skip forward a little bit more. I also don't like the term content maker. Oh, I have to copy this over again, so. I have to go here. Then here in the text. Which again, it's not updating. Here I probably have to, yeah. So here the mask is way too big and I have to edit it. To actually make it look somewhat decent. Otherwise you can see that the, the shadow will be much bigger than the actual text itself and it won't look the best. Something like this would be okay. I want it to be a bit shorter, but probably not. I also don't like the term content maker. Content creator, I would say. It yeah, that seems to be a natural space to have the text stop. Creator, I would say, is probably the best thing, because YouTuber, it has the, those... We have another question over here. Does this actually fit? I copied over the clip from the other one, and it actually fits to the clip exactly. <laughs> That's funny. It's also the same person asking the same question. So me reading out their two different questions uh, to the exact same amount of time down to the frames, to the, the 1 over 60th of a second. Uh, would it be more fun editing somebody else's videos, uh, even for money maybe? Uh, especially for money. <laughs> In fact, I would argue only for money is it fun to do somebody else's work. <laughs> I don't think I answered like that in the original, uh, but that would have been a very good answer. I need to line this 
here. And that goes there. Uh, what is your inspiration for the Stories of the Mind album? Do you consider it a concept album? Uh, the Deep Blue Fishing is not there. Is this here? I don't even know now how long I've been streaming. It's just one hour now. I mean, I have the clock over there. Yeah, I could see it there. Normally, I check OBS, but I have to have stuff on top of OBS because I uh, have so many different things that I have to keep track of when I'm editing this particular series. Normally, not all edits require me to have like a text document and Ableton and, and another thing on the, the third monitor. With the other edits, it's usually very easy because it's just my footage. But here I have to take stuff from the chat, what you guys say, uh, have the topics on there, have the, the text to speech that I record on that monitor and that I speak on that monitor, or that I put in the, the text to speech like program on the browser in that monitor, and then I record it in Ableton over there. Uh, so there's a lot of different components. And one of the issues with that is that I cannot see OBS, so I don't see how long I've been streaming. Uh, what's your inspiration for the Stories of the Mind album? Do you consider it a concept album? Perfect grammar. I like that. Thank you, Sandru, uh, for not having to edit your message. Concept <laughs> album? I don't think it's a concept album. I wrote Stories of the Mind from the album. I like that approach. I think you did it really effectively. I so here we have a part where I probably need to text to speech again uh text is going to be a little bit later yeah there's no way that i read that message out in one go I'll 77 minutes you stream. I think Thank you. you did it really effectively. I feel like the tracks really kind of spark you to think about your own life. Very shamanic. Cool stuff. Is it shamanic? Is that the proper word? Or is it shamanic? Yeah, this word. What I don't like is how many times he paused, so we'll have to edit this a little bit. Look at the pauses here in the text. This guy is, is an even worse speaker than I am. I do think that when it comes to speaking on camera, I'm definitely not good at it. Like, it, it would have been much easier, this kind of job, if I was better at speaking on cameras. Both for the recording part and the, the stream part as well. Where here I have to edit less. I would have, have to edit less for the stream. Uh, when I'm editing the stream. And when I'm recording my videos, it would also be, um, you know, easier, quicker to edit. Because I would have fewer takes uh, to actually get the sentence right that I want to say. I like that approach. I think you did it really. I think you did. I just put in some random like line. Uh, what would you call it? New lines, I guess, for any programmers. Uh, but I just try to find exactly where the space will work. And cool stuff with an exclamation point. Really effectively. I feel like the tracks really kind of. Okay. Oh, 
by the way, you can see how much of a difference this makes, that, that little mask behind it. How much easier the text becomes to read if it's a little bit darker in the background and there's a little bit, it stands out a little bit more. Oh, manic. Cool stuff. Yeah, that was the goal. In, in the sense that it's written... You can say shamanic. ...my Perfect. experiences, but anybody else could fill in their own experiences and it would still make sense for them. I think at any point I'm going to reveal... Oh, here I have a fun thing that I'm doing. Uh, I'll, I'll play this here. ...serious, and I kind of want to keep it that way. I don't want to at any point shatter that illusion. So I'm, I don't think at any point I'm going to reveal what the actual meaning behind the album was. I'm going, I'm going from one, the uh, title card, and I'm going to say revealing the meaning behind the, my album, right? Because all of the title cards have my voice under it. When the final video is done, and I'll be just like, oh no, kidding, and then something else. For some reason, this title is a duplicate of this title. That shouldn't yeah, be. The case. I have a problem with the D Blue glitch plugin. Having a problem with is not so much the plugin itself, but the fact that it's. 32 I'm writing in title here and shouldn't I shouldn't do that I should only capitalize the first thing when you write YouTube titles you want to capitalize a lot more hey why is there I did have this written down in my topics notes over here all of the topics that sit in the video but i didn't change the actual title card for it strange uh anyway i saw this already uh, here we have that text this also has to be text to speech let me quickly edit it and then I can record. Hey, Projector. I have a problem with the D Blue glitch plugin. Could you just pull up the link? So I know that I actually got the right one. I'll figure it out from there. Okay, so obviously we want the that to continue the, the, the link so that I know that I actually got the right one. That's one sentence. And projector is going to be with a C uh, for now, so that it actually pronounces it properly, I think. Hey, projector, I have a problem with the D Blue glitch plugin. Could you just pull up the link so I know that I actually got the right one? I'll figure it out from there. Okay. So, let's see. This should be the right recording then. And now I have to put the K back here. When I copy over the text, I don't forget to actually change that. Oh, I like that between the project tabs that you have over here, the sequence tabs, and the actual timeline where you click that there's no indication of where the, the change is between one and the other. It's also nice if you're zoom scrolling across the timeline and then you accidentally move up and you start scrolling across projects like this. It's very well designed, this piece of software. To be honest, I don't know why I would, <laughs> why I would stream all of this because at the end of the day, this is just going to be me complaining for a while about how terrible of a program this is. And yes, for those wondering, why wouldn't you switch to an alternative? I have tried that. Uh, because from time to time, I also work for other YouTubers. It is very annoying working in a software that that YouTuber doesn't work in. And then having to switch back for your YouTube edits to Premiere and then kind of maintain knowledge in two different programs. So I struggle a lot with this program, but I push through it because I know that at the end of the day, it's faster to learn one program like this and learn all of the strange things that it does so that you can immediately react to when, for example, you're scrolling across the timeline and all of a sudden you find yourself in a whole different project, you know, oh yeah, I know what happened here. And you're not confused by it. Uh, I think that is faster and then dealing with all of the issues that the program has than learning two different programs and maintaining all of the knowledge 
uh, that you know within those programs. What you're probably having a problem with is not so much the plugin itself, but the fact that it's... Okay, let me just put that text in there. This line's up there. This line's up there. And then this lines up. I now see that I need to add a space in the other one as well. We'll quickly go back later. Yeah, that's good. Okay. And then over here, there's like one space missing here. From there. What you're probably having a problem with is not so much the plugin itself, but the fact that it's 32 bits. And most DAWs don't use 32 bit plugins anymore. They don't read them anymore. So you cannot open them. The one that you want is this over here this is the plugin uh, and if this download works then get this but for glitch it should work fine 32 bit was the problem i'm i'll figure it out i'm a coder um right call it thank you 32 bit Problem. There we are. Here again, I have to do a lot of edits to the text. There's like triple dots in there and stuff like that. Uh, somebody had like control or, or capital D colon at the end of it, like a smiley face. 32 bits was a problem. I'm right. Got it. Thank you. No. 32 bit was the problem. That right god, thank you, no, is gonna go away. And I will just have this. Thirty-two bit was the problem. I'll figure it out, I'm a coder. It's funny that it waits like a second for every dot that is in the sentence. And then anytime it would be natural to wait a little bit, it immediately continues. I'll figure it out, I'm a coder. <laughs> so here I have to put this here and then I can Temporarily move that there. Delete those. This over there. This one, like, yeah, that can be here. It's not that long or that short of a clip. So I don't think that the text being on screen too short will be an issue here. Fine. 32 bit was the problem. I'll figure it out. I'm a coder. I mean, yeah, but. To be honest, I'm not too big of a fan of the text-to-speech. It's just that sometimes my pronunciation of different things or the way that I say a certain sentence when I'm just reading it in the chat is so bad that it's just hard to follow. And that's the only reason why it's in here. I mean, yeah, but coding your own plugin bridge from 32-bit to 64-bit is, is... All of that stuff. I'm not going to code that shit. No, no. Yeah, so this would be a longer one. There should be another one in here, if I remember correctly. You do need to make sure that your JBridge, your JBridge, yeah, folder is like installed properly and full JBridge 
folder is like installed properly and all of that stuff. I'm not going to code that shit. No, 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 no. That, that... Okay, so probably up until here, we want to have the text, right? Because I immediately react to that and it's immediately like continuing the sentence. Uh, so we'll have it a little bit longer on the screen so that people can actually read it. Stuff. I'm not going to code that shit. No, 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 no. That that's <laughs> that would take. That seems to solve it. Okay. Here. Here. Like so. Shit. No, 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 no. That that's. <laughs> that would take too much. Just just get Jaybridge and, and get them to do it. It's the, the the programming way, right? Somebody on Google already did it for me, so why would I bother doing it again? Why do most sidelines tracks sample documentaries about life, evolution, humanity, and spirituality? Hello, I would like to paste the thing that I just copied. Thank you very much. I do think, by the way, that I spent more time inside of Ableton than I do in, <laughs> or inside of Premiere Pro than I do inside of Ableton. Uh, why do most? This over here. About. Hmm. I guess that can work and having all of the slashes in here because I don't want to have them all on separate or I don't want to have like this where it's on separate oh, on separate lines like that. I don't think that that's going to look good. So I think I'll keep it like that, even though I'm not entirely happy with how the text looks like this. I think with the way that he phrased this question, there's not really a way around that. Why do most sidelines tracks sample documentaries about life, evolution, humanity, and spirituality? It's because we're all a bunch of spiritual people. And that is reflected in the both the culture and in the They took LSD and mushrooms and smoked a lot of Mary Jane. Uh, they smoked... There we are. It's much faster when I don't have to do the text to speech. I should just teach myself to always properly pronounce the stuff that people say in the chat. LSD should be capitalized, so should they. And there should be a dot here. I didn't check the last one, by the way. Yeah, that's good. Okay. And then I need to probably, yeah, make the mask a bit bigger here again. I was like, how could the last one be so small? But I took it from here or, or an earlier one. Mary Jane, is that capitalized? Is it with an I or is it EA? I'll have to Google this, but I think you might be right in that it's a name. Mary Jane Shoes. Scarpe. Rosse Scarpe Donne Spider Man. Watson. Okay. I think, yeah, it's, it's probably a name. <laughs> Even though it refers to marijuana here. No, but Mary, not Mary. Yeah, okay, perfect. So this should probably be good then. Uh, 
it took LSD and mushrooms and smoked a lot of Mary Jane. Yes. Yes, obviously that also tends to happen a lot in the spiritual community as well. Taking psychedelics, it is called psytrance for a reason. Each other, like psychedelic rock or something like that. There's also... Okay. Yeah, should be good now. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? It's not like people are going to complain about the grammars in the text that appear on screen for two seconds <laughs> halfway through a video talking about <laughs> people smoking weed and something like that. <laughs> so people aren't really going to care, but it's something that I personally care about. So if I can improve the, the, the quality of the content even by a little bit, by just making sure that the grammar is okay and that it's easy to read and stuff like that, um, is that how you write psychedelic? Psych. Yeah, no, there's an E there, not an I. There we are. Like psychedelic rock or something like that. There's also influences from. Yeah, so here we can probably remove the text from here. I'm pretty sure people would understand even with Mary Lol. Just a heads up. Yeah, I. It's nice that. Um, to be honest, <laughs> it's very nice having people with me like this because this is the kind of thing that I would personally never catch, right? I would. I. My English grammar is not good enough to know the correct spelling of those kind of words. The words that you use every once in a while um, in like conversation because. I just don't, I guess, not being a native speaker, uh, I just don't have the, that ability to recognize those things. Maybe you're not a native speaker either and you're just very good at English or something like that. Uh, but I'd like to believe that my English is pretty good. Um, especially for an Italian, for somebody living in Italy and, and having done a lot of my English education here in Italy, I would say that it's actually very, very good. Um, but yeah, if I can just improve the content and if you guys can help improve the content, uh, that would also be nice, of course. And as I said, this is the something that I would personally never catch. So I'm very glad that you did. I find it very difficult writing intros. Any tips? Uh, I find it very difficult writing intros. Any tips? We have that over here. Yeah, Marie is the French version of the English name uh, Mary and uh, the Latin name Maria. So it wasn't actually wrong. It, it, I mean, yeah, if you look at it, the, the I guess it should be the intro one or the intro, the English one. <laughs> I just see the word English <laughs> intro and I immediately start reading that. Um... But yeah, having the whole text in English and then one word in French or Italian is probably not exactly what you want. Uh, that being said, as I said, it, it's that last 5%, right? I previously compared it to mastering in music production. It's Nobody is going to care about that kind of detail. It's just something that you do to make sure that uh, you just have that extra 5% that it just looks a little bit better. Same with this thing over here, right? The black background. It just makes it the text a little bit easier to read. And if it wasn't there, nobody would know. Everybody would look at that and say like, oh, nice. So he puts the text on the screen. That's very nice. But if I do it like this, people will see, hey, he puts the text on the screen. That's very nice. If, if, if I did this or this, people wouldn't complain about like the text is hard to read or something like that. It's just like this is a little bit easier to read. You know what I mean? Yes, you want to just start off with the most interesting bit of the intro. I want to... Okay. Let's see what this is. Someone said that it's best to make the first two seconds stand out so it's instantly memorable from the start. Good. 
this is a very strange guy whoever wrote in the messages because he just capitalizes one word i don't know why he does that maybe his reasoning was that he wanted it to stand out as well um how important are reference tracks to you important sorry when it comes to reference tracks the way that i mix and write and master my stuff in the mastering states i do use direct referencing where i reference my music to other music that I like to see it like at the end do I actually like where this is going do I like the, the final product that I'm creating but when I'm producing and when I'm mixing I don't want to get too influenced by other music what I do want to do is listen to a lot of Spotify you can see Spotify is right here next to my DAW so these are all of the programs that I basically use on a daily basis right so Spotify is one of them because every day I like to listen to maybe like half an hour maybe uh, 45 minutes ish of other people's music that I like, that I think sounds good, that I think is well mixed, that I think is well mastered, that I think is well written. Uh, all of the the good stuff um, that you that I want in my music, I listen to music that already has that for at least that amount of time, so that I'm tuning my ears uh, to get close in terms of how I should be writing my music, as opposed to directly referencing you just train your ears before you even get started and if you do that day in day out you don't necessarily need the reference track in the project uh, while you're producing or while you're mixing or while you're mastering uh, as i said for the mastering it is still helpful for me i like to master with references so that i can check it essentially um but the main way that people use reference tracks is that when they're producing they just have a track in the project i don't do that i i've never never really done that to be honest i was going to think if i did that before i made side trends but even there i never really produced with uh like a reference track already in a production project Someone said that it's best to make the first two seconds stand out so it's instantly memorable from the start. To be honest, it doesn't really matter that much because most of your... Okay. So that's that one done. We just copy over the outro bit and then we can just quickly get the intro text done. Uh, let's see, I have to open up this one here again. Am I dedicating my life to Cytrans is then 0010 here. This is how would I write Minecraft music is 0104. This is just the timestamps for the topics, right? 0327. Uh, then we have how I wrote stories of the mind here. Um, zero seven forty-two. I do have the revealing the meaning behind my album. No, just kidding thing in here, but that's because it's kind of like an editor note. That's for the joke that I'm going to be making here with this transition, because I end essentially the last thing that I say here is I'll probably never reveal the meaning behind my album, and then it skips to this topic and it will say revealing the meaning behind my album, and then right here I'll just go like. No kidding, maybe I'll even cut to black for a little bit and then it'll actually say the topic. Uh, so here the topic is going to be 0935 here. I think that would be nice, a little bit of a, a funny joke. There's not much that I can do here with memes and stuff like that. Maybe somebody else would do that more, but I feel like it would disrupt the flow of the content. Maybe if I had a different editor that just said like, Oh, but you're just a boring guy and you need to spice it up with a lot of memes for it to be watchable, this content. Then maybe that would actually be better. But personally, I do like to think of myself as interesting uh, to the extent that I don't need like external sound bites and all of that stuff all the time to actually make my videos interesting. That being said, not a lot of you seem to agree because not a lot of people are watching this series right now. But hopefully on the new channel it can be... Maybe it will find its own audience. Maybe by separating it 
to a different channel, it will find its own space. Kind of like how my music right now on the Eclipse channel is popping off much more than any of my individual videos would. And I think that is because it's a newer channel, so YouTube is testing it more. Hello, I would like you to update so that I can... There we are. This thing is sleepier than the bots that we use for the stream. Uh, I have trouble. What is a good sample patch setter from a bad one? I always go for the cleanest samples rather than the one that fits best. It's, that's hard to say because it's going to depend exactly on what you need. For samples and patches and, and, and presets and, and sounds and that kind of stuff. Mm. Honestly, the, the best actual advice that I can give you that isn't some superficial tip is just um, continue producing. Continue doing more. With experience, you will hear what a good sample is. Most of the videos when people talk about sample selection and that kind of stuff also boil down to the same kind of conclusion. Why is this not lined up? Over here. Is this Has this text never been lined up? Or is there no space in here? Ah, there's no space. But this, this doesn't. What? Turns out the text is doesn't line up. Anyway, um, but most tutorials when it comes to sample selection and that kind of stuff, they bo also boil down to the same advice in that just use good samples is what they say. And throughout experience, you'll actually learn what good samples sound like. Um, there's no such thing as like a tip where it's like, oh, if you need to do a lot of EQing, then it's a bad sample. Or if you need to do a lot of post-processing, then you shouldn't be using the patch that you're using for the, the melody or whatever. It's it, whatever you need to do to get your idea out there, just do that. Uh, so to, to really answer your question, what is a good patch? How you, do you recognize it? A good patch or sample is the one that... Uh, encompasses the idea that you want to write musically the best. So the one that fits best, yeah, maybe maybe that's the, the best way to say it. Um, okay, I'll have to find out why this is not aligning. I always thought that this would align perfectly. Did I just, yeah, I just, for some reason, made a text block while clicking on the actual text itself. Uh, again, Premiere Pro being Premiere Pro here. Uh, it has been almost two hours of streaming. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a quick break. Right now I have a single button for that. I do have to quickly open up a track here. The fun thing is because this is like an editing software, I can also just grab a track, pop it in here, well, play this one. I'll play this one again. I can just pop a track in here. I cannot loop it, but I can just play it from here and I can solo it right in here. I would have thought for sure that at some point somebody would ask the question, which DAW is this? It's kind of like a joke because it's an editing stream and not production stream. But um, yeah. Maybe I should have it here so that you guys aren't distracted by the, the, the video and whatnot. And I also don't trust the solo function here. With the amount of things that can go wrong in this software, I don't actually trust that it's working. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to take a quick... I actually realized that I, my comment on how this worked didn't come through because it turns off the microphone. Um, I now have the stream deck thing that allows me to switch scenes seamlessly. Um, but yeah, 
I wanted to say it, it looked nice when I did it, and I was hoping that it actually worked. Anyway, I'll take a quick break and then I'll be right back.
My timing, as always, immaculate, as you guys come to expect from me. So this one is done over here. Uh, we can move on to the next one. Here I have to do some other stuff, I think. Of course, you can see the pinned message here in the stream chats, and you can go check it out. Yeah, I'll have to probably put the uh, video itself on there. The way that I do that is I have to go in incognito mode for that and then find the channel in this case the eclipse channel which i should easily find because yeah it, it usually pops up a short or a video from that on my page and then i just go to incognito mode that way it doesn't show me having watched any of the videos because normally if i go to the eclipse channel what you'll see is this where it has the little blue or the little red bar below it right i don't want that when i take the screenshot for the video that i want to market in this case this video has to pop up so i'll just print screen this and then we go into my image editor I might even have still not in here, but in here. Uh, no. Okay, so I can see if I can find one. This is the nice thing about having earlier work that you can refer to. Most sometimes, yeah. So over here, right now, I already have a video that I marketed in a different uh, video of mine. 
what I can do is I can just keep canvas size and then find the video that I need to market. And then just align it properly. Maybe one down, something like that. This one is a little bit shorter because the title is shorter. I'm just going to grab uh, this bit here. And then I can save this. Just give it a simple name like that. And now I can drag that into, where is it? Here. And obviously I'll, I'll make it bigger and I'll make it stand out and stuff like that. Uh, but first let's do the texting. I'll just go through it in a linear way. This does not need text to speech, by the way. Why do people still release music on vinyl? Why do people still release music on vinyl? I would like to edit this text, please. Thank you very much. Vinyl is also spelled like this, right? And then the would you should go, I should copy this over first because it, it removes the clipboard. I left a little bit of space here before so that the text can come in. And now I can take this text over here, release music on vinyl, that looks better. Oh, here I can just do this. And now we can align everything. So one goes over there. Oh, is it going? It's going very well. Just trying to get some work done here, trying to do some editing. I don't know how interesting this is. As I said before, I think that this won't be a very watched stream of mine. Uh, it's not the, the best content that I can make, but uh, seeing as I just had work to do and I figured why not go live. And also because it's the start of my uh, sale, I figured why not just incorporate everything and, and both market my sale and edit. Uh, but still, it's it's nice to have. And I already had the benefit from somebody actually helping me and pointing out a mistake that I made in one of the texts in terms of grammar. Um, but yeah, I'm just chilling, to be honest, just sitting here editing. As I said, it's it's not the most interesting content that I can make, but it will just have to do for today. It's still the kind of stream where I can just interact with you guys and chat a little bit, and that's nice as well. Would I? Uh, I don't think so. No. Would I? Uh, uh, I don't like that I say would I instead of would you. Should I change that in the text here? I think I will. No. No, I think the, the viewer asking, would you make sense? Uh, I don't think so. No. I don't have any reason to do that. No. How does that flow? Why do people still release music on vinyl? Nostalgia. And this is a nice bug as well. It just lowers the FPS sometimes when you play back. Why do people still release music on vinyl? Nostalgia and because it sounds cool. Would I? Uh, I don't think so. No, I don't have any reason to do that. No, I, I'm fine releasing the music the way that I have. Speaking about releasing music, for anybody in here in the chat that doesn't know, I did re today release a new song. Of course, this probably has to go to like 200 ish, maybe. Yeah, we'll stick it somewhere up here. I like to align these things with something in the interface so it's like neatly aligned there. And then I'll just, I guess, copy over the mask here. Let me copy 
copy over the face here and here. And I can line this there and then we'll make the mask just sit around here, here, it's hard to line it up properly because one has influence on the, where the other one is if it's not lined up properly. But yeah, just this shoot song. Of course, you can see the pinned message here in the stream chat and you can go check it out. I would appreciate it that if you check it out, that you listen to it the whole way through. For anybody in here in the chat that doesn't know, I did re today release. Re no, I did. I think I'll have it start here. I did re today release a new song. I would appreciate it that if you check it out. I think I'll have it longer on here. New song. I would appreciate it that if you check it out, that you listen to it the whole way through. That's better for the YouTube algorithm and we can really use any type of boost with that. So go rack up some. What we need is, uh, or what I need here is, I need to keep in mind that this needs a card when it comes out. Like when the video is actually published, uh, there's the little link that you can put in here in the top right. Um, that way, if this is blue, I'll remember or I'll see like, oh, this is stuff that needs a link in there. Um, that base table, that base wavetable spec you did, 3000 wavetables. Yes. All automatically imported into Faceplant. And all automatically rendered out and, and all... Uh, I did not do any manual work there. I made all of the, I made the setup that would generate 3,000 wavetable, 3,000 sounds for me, and then I did chop it up manually, I guess, and then consolidate it, uh, and then I wrote code that would automatically organize the files for me, and then I wrote another piece of code that would automatically import. The way the the sound into uh, face pant and turn it into a wavetable for me. <laughs> uh, it, it sounds like a large number, but I think I spent less time making this wavetable pack than the wave the 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 actual wavetable pack that I sell, which is just normal wavetables, right? Just for normal everyday sound design. Um, let me see if I can show you which one I meant. This one over here, I think this one has like 400 wave tables ish, 350. I think this one took longer than the 3000 wave table pack uh, for the base one. It's also more expensive for that reason. It really, the, the number is, doesn't really mean much, right? Because I could automate almost every step of the process. You wrote script, right? Yes, yes. It's insane, nevertheless. Yeah, it's it's still, I think, a very cool product. And I hope that m people will enjoy it and that they'll improve their baselines by using it. But it's... I think the more impressive part is, in, is um, the ideas behind it, the way that I found out about how you can do this and how you can import your processing as a wavetable so that you always have a clean baseline and then separate the sub base and then uh, do all of the tricks and stuff that I did in there. I think that's more impressive than the actual size of the pack. Of how you included the no sub and the clean sub versions quite handy. Yeah, that's just so that you don't have to do that manually. The clean, the clean sub is something that you cannot do if you have the default wavetable. If you have the default wavetable, though, inside of something like Serum, you can very quickly remove the fundamental. Still, not having to do that, saving that one step in the process can be an improvement in terms of your workflow. So for that reason, I could as well include it, right? Seeing as well, I was automatically generating stuff, it didn't. I didn't spend any extra time implementing that feature or, or implementing that it has 
I guess, those variations. Um... I need to find the text for this one. Here we are. Most people use background noise. This is going to be a very long piece of text. As a background, I don't know if I wanted that close to the thing. Maybe that's not a good idea. I know, but it's true for most regular people. Okay. Now let's do the mask. I like how sometimes it just decides like, no, you don't want to move it. You want actually want to rotate things. Nope. I agree. I was thinking I should do it like that too from now on. To be honest, I think a lot of people are still not going to get the, the idea behind the Wavetable Pack in that the Wavetable Pack really is designed so that you don't do any post-processing on your baseline. And I think people still will do that because people don't know, right? Like they can get the Wavetable, but if they then start adding multiband processing and, and filtering and, and excessive EQing, as I said in the video, you can do a little bit of EQing and you will be all right in terms of phase shift. Um, I do see that this text is cut off here, so uh, we'll fix that. But the the main idea is that you don't do any of the processing anymore because the processing is essentially already in the wavetable. So it, it doesn't really make sense to then process it again because you lose all of the benefits of having a baseline made out of a wavetable to begin with. I don't know, maybe people will realize that that is how it should work, but I think a lot of people will forget why the wavetable pack exists, what, what the, the, like my reasoning behind it is, and they'll still just apply the processing that they like. But at the end of the day, it's not my job to babysit people throughout the whole baseline creation process. At this point, I've created so much content about baseline creation that if you don't know how to create a baseline uh, that is clean, that sounds nice, and that is, is I guess, processed in a manner that actually uh, makes sense in a mixing uh, sense, right? Um, yeah, as soon as you use the multiband, the purpose dies. As, uh, that's true, yeah, exactly. But at this point, I've created so much content that people should just be able to do that, that they should be able to just make a baseline. Right. If you watch, I, I am 100% sure that if you watch, study and understand all of the content that I've created about baselines on my channel, that you will be able to create baselines, I guess, like me. And if you think my baselines are professional, then yeah, that, that's what you're going to get. You're, you're going because th that's the information that I know, right? Most people don't pay attention to composition, rhythm, lyrics. They don't remember the specifics. I do think. Okay. I have that text over here as well. I do sometimes feel like um, when it comes to other people struggling with their baselines, specifically when I do a feedback stream and 99% of the tracks have baselines that just aren't clean, I sometimes still feel like I could be doing more to spread the message on this kind of stuff and how important that is. Uh, but for the feedback stream, I do realize that a lot of people use it to 
showcase music that isn't necessarily finished. So they're not yet at the resampling stage. But also just by talking about resampling that much inside of feedback streams, I realized that there's a lot of people that just simply don't know. That that I guess just they just do whatever sounds right on their Bluetooth headphones or whatever they use to produce or their, their laptop speakers, whatever it is. And they don't actually care about the technicalities. And I think you'll never get to a professional level if you don't do that. Uh, here we have... Uh, would I like to produce like I did in the 90s? Studio with sampler and synths and a MIDI-only sequencer. I think this was earlier on in the stream. I do believe Shadow Rage was the guy that... Oh no, here it is. Because I did move some things around in here, I think. Maybe not in the 9, maybe in the 8 I did that. We're currently editing the episode 9 over here, as it says, but it's actually really 4 episodes for the episode 9 and then 4 episodes over here for the episode 8 because I decided to cut it up into smaller videos. Make it more easy to watch. That's nice. I'm not going to do anything about that either. Have you ever wanted to try the 90s studio with sampler and synths and a MIDI only sequencer? No, no. I think that the technologies that we have right now allows me to mu make the music that I want to make. And I don't see a reason why I wouldn't want to have or why I wouldn't want to continue just working like this. Music University. This is probably going to be uh related to zen lion yeah zen lion just joined the, this here and then it's, I think, this. Let me see this get, uh, if this is the right text, though. Remember that I told you that I'm starting a production course. I'm starting. Yes. I'm starting a production course. Uh, environments. Soon. I think that looks better like that. And then this obviously has to go here and here. Again, I don't care for rotating it. I would just like to move it. So please just allow me to move it. Thank you. Starting to understand the DAW environment a bit better. I hope to be back on your feedback stream soon. I say it says in here, but I'm going to make it on so that I actually say the right thing. <laughs> back on your feedback stream soon. Cool. That's nice. How long did you start now ago? Because I think it was like two weeks ago that you said it, but then it was another week because you were ill or something like that, or maybe like three weeks ago that happened. The, the reason why I'm, by the way, confused with this is Imagine how confused I am now that I have to edit it again. <laughs> I didn't I didn't actually play the part where I say it's because of the editing, but essentially my whole point in this part of the conversation is that because I edit the streams, I have a very strange perception of time in that when somebody says, oh, this happened so many weeks ago, do you remember that stream? I may remember it from like a week ago because I edited the stream a lot later than I actually streamed it. <laughs> so sometimes when people have conversations about things that they already had a conversation about with me in the past, my um, perception and, and all of that about the, the time that's passed is a little bit off in that regard.
Um, let's see. On the second week, but my previous not. Yeah, but in the second week. So that's this one over here. For those that don't know, for those that are just joining, the way that I'm getting these texts is I'm just, I just have to stream over here. On a second monitor. Uh, helping. And together. Do I want to do it like that? Yeah, that looks clean. I like that. Just randomly move my clip there. Yeah, I'm on the second week, but my previous knowledge is helping me and things have been coming together in my mind. Yeah, of course, once you... The thing that I noticed with learning stuff in regards to audio, the way that I was doing it in university, is that it does extend your base knowledge of a thing that you already have. So before I went into university... Do the alignment over here. I'm looking at the waveform. I'm not entirely sure if this is going to be one without text to speech because it looks like I'm speaking really slowly towards the end there. Also, they allowed me to sit with the lecture and my understanding first, yada, yada, yada. I still remember some of the conversations that I had, even though this stream is probably four weeks old now. I was already behind before I went to uh, my parents for Easter. Um, and then after I came back, I had so much work to do that I still haven't done any of the streams. This is all for the, the new channel, by the way, for those that don't know. This is really annoying trying to line this one up. I don't like that this one is so much shorter. I guess I can... Remedy it a little bit like that. Yeah, that looks better. Also, they allowed me to sit with the lecturer and give them my understanding. With the lecturer. My understanding first. So the lecturer said I don't need the basic course. So I just went straight to the advanced course. Ah, nice. Yeah, if they allow you to That's skip good parts that you already know, that allows you to immediately get into the, the part where you actually start to learn new stuff. So that's helpful too, yeah. Did you do any... Uh, did you do any gain staging at the beginning of this production? I have that over here. Again, we'll have to wait like 30 seconds for the actual text to show up. I say 30, but it's probably much less. It's just that when you're waiting for something, it always feels much longer than it actually is. Honestly, if there is one thing that I wish AI could do like this is edit my videos like these. When it comes to this kind of editing from the stream, this is probably the most annoying editing that I do. And part of the that is the reason why I decided to stream it today. Because if I stream for four hours, it just means that for four hours, I actually have to continue working. And usually when I do these things, I have like YouTube open. I have maybe have like a podcast open or something else that I'm listening to open, which gets in the way of the actual audio that I'm trying to hear. And I just distract myself with many, many different things. So streaming actually forces me to, I guess, engage a little bit more with the actual work that I'm doing because I cannot just, you know, open up a video and, and start watching it. Right? Yeah. Indeed, we're pointing at the kick and base. Yes. Uh, I indeed 
were, were pointing at the kicking bins. That's not proper English. Do I fix that? Yeah. And these were pointing at the kick and base. Yes. So I do have a, an initial volume, I guess, that I set up for the different elements that I have. I think I'll text to speech this one. I indeed was pointing at kick and base. At the. I indeed was pointing at the kick and base. Being a sidelines producer, the fact that he spends so much time saying kick and base, we kind of say, I guess we're so used to saying it, at least for me, you know, being uh, somebody that makes tutorials and stuff like that. This is also very nice that some zoom levels don't show the waveform. Uh, but as a YouTuber, I, I guess I say the words kick and bass so much that for me it becomes a lot faster to say it. Or I say it a lot faster, I guess. Uh, okay, this one is going to go forward here because this is where I just kind of continue talking. Right, so you want that to line up. I indeed was pointing at the kick. Okay, now we just have to edit the mask here. Kick and bass. Yes, so I do have a, an initial volume, I guess, type of vibe I'm going for. That's glitch starts at minus 12, kick minus 12, bass minus 13. Yeah, that one also needs. Test glitch starts at minus thirteen. Dash glitch starts with his kick at minus twelve and his base at minus thirteen. Project reception can be quite trippy. <laughs> I do understand, yeah. Imagine how it is for me that I have to do this every day, listen to myself, listen to how I speak. All of the annoyances that uh, I have with my own voice and stuff like that. I don't know why it's happening, why it's, it keeps deleting the waveform there. I actually say every day, but it has been like four days since I last had to edit something. To be honest, the millisecond it makes financial sense for me to... Um, how would you say that? Have somebody else do the editing for me? The millisecond that it makes financial sense to do that, I will do it. Because I don't like this. This is not fun work. Uh, to do. It is just stuff that has to be done. I am very skeptical if it will ever happen though. Both because I don't know that this YouTube channel can grow to a point where I make enough money to outsource part of the work. Because that's just expensive, right? Like an edit like this where somebody is, is spending a few hours on an edit. I, I assume that you would pay several hundred bucks for that. Uh, that was my question. It is indeed your question right here. Uh, you can see yourself right now. It's hard for you guys to see because it's so zoomed in. Uh, but right now, here you can see your own name. So yeah, this is indeed your question. It's also a Wesleyception then. <laughs> Do you use Scilab at all? I know you use Scyscope from time to time. 
I use side scope all the time in all of my productions. Uh, do I use side lap? No. I have opened it. I looked at how the playback worked in there. And uh, for some reason, I couldn't get it to just trigger by MIDI. And then I gave up on it. And I, I used the demo maybe like half an hour. To me, what is important about a plugin and a software is that when I dive into it, it immediately has to make sense. It immediately has to click with me. Um, so if I sit here and I start tweaking the, the demo for like half an hour of a plugin, and it just doesn't work, it, does, it doesn't allow me to get to where I want to go, which in this case was just having it play a kick and bass. For some reason, it just didn't want to do it. Um, I could get it to play by just playback, as in any time I played back the project, it would sync up and it would play its kick and bass, kind of like the way that Stepic does uh, or used to do it. Now Stepic is also MIDI triggered. But I just couldn't get it exactly to work. So for that reason, I decided to, to hell with it. I'll just uh, continue making my kick and bass the way that I've always done it. But it also didn't click either. Yeah, if it, if it doesn't click for you, if it immediately doesn't become intuitive to use, then it, it for me, I say it like, okay, I'm out. I'm not going to waste any more time on there. Because I do think that my time is valuable. Right? I think everybody thinks that because we only have so many years. Uh, and spending maybe a day experimenting or, or playing with a software that just doesn't seem to work for you is not a way that I would like to spend my time. I'm just describing desk glitch. It's okay. I'm just describing desk glitch. There we are. I would like to thank you now that you're here, Wesley, for capitalizing all of your names so that I don't have to do that personally. Uh, and finishing with a dot at the end there. Nice grammar. I don't have to edit anything. I believe here it was also the same. Yeah. Starts with capitals, ends with a dot. I may have written this. Yeah, because you wrote a desk lit starts with, and it starts at minus 12 dB, kick minus 12 base, minus 13. And I wrote that into here. Oh. And here, there's there's a missing dot. <laughs> it's not straightforward. Scilab, yeah, no, it's it's a a difficult uh, plugin. I say plugin, but I believe there's also like a standalone version of it. A lot of those things, those issues that um, Plugins tend to have where they're not intuitive stem from the fact that sometimes they are also available as a standalone. And for a standalone, you obviously don't have a host for it. So things tend to work in different ways. And it's not like the design often adapts for that, I found. Play. I have a very interesting track that I can play during the break. The track that came out today. <laughs> Just a joke. The real joke here is that... I opened up a YouTube video and it immediately crashed my stream. <laughs> That's the real joke here. Um, I think I can just copy over the the marketing thing that I have over here. I think originally I had these two parts in different videos. Uh, but I'll just do it like this. Excuse my typing, by the way, the autocorrect took over without me noticing it. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it's a little bit of extra work. It's not like I care more or less about the people that <laughs> use proper grammar or stuff like that. The track that came out today. <laughs> by the way, this stream will probably not end up becoming a conversation stream. Um, seeing it, how much videos I'm able to get from a single stream. I don't think I'll need to um, edit down every single stream that I do. I'm just going to find the most interesting streams from it. 
It's actually auto corrupt today. <laughs> nice. All of a sudden, we have these connectivity issues now. I came back and it's disconnected again. What is this? Right. But if I look at where it is out of performance, can I show this? No, I cannot show it. The performance of the short. Oh, yeah. Here I have to edit over a screen capture of this, which I'm not even sure I'm able to get because the thing that I explain happens behind the camera. Short. It's absolutely miserable. And YouTube doesn't tell me why. Like, I'll go in here and I can see that it's from the beginning being shown less than my average short. So what I can do already, I guess, uh, starting from here, is move the camera down. Uh, let's take this. Also, if you want, I want, now want to copy this clip and put it up one higher. I believe the best way to that you can do that is by locking the track and then pasting it in. Because there's no way that you can say, oh, I, wa I want to copy on this track over here. Let's say that I select this track. If I copy this and paste it, it will con just copy it or it will paste it over the clip that is already there. This is just brilliant design, by the way. If there's already a clip there, just ignore it and copy over it. Don't look at what the user actually selects over here. The only way that I know how you can specify the track that you want to place your copy on is by locking it and then pasting it on there. Which is just annoying. If you want something on the, 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 the 14th track, you'll have to lock track 1 up until 13 and then you can paste it on the 14th track. Sometimes this is not an issue. You can just like move back here, paste it and then move it into place. But especially with projects that are very long, and I noticed this when I was editing my uh, Ultimate Base Guide, which is three hours long. If I need something copied and pasted over in the beginning, I have to scroll for it like a very long time. You, you actually feel that in your fingers, the amount of scrolling that you have to do um, with such an edit. Overall, I scroll a lot when it comes to editing because I'm constantly like zooming in and out and the way that I move around the timeline is also through zooming. I think this is more intuitive than just scrolling like this. Uh, anyway, we want to cut out the camera over here. So the way that I'm going to quickly do that is with the crop here so that I can move the camera down a little bit and then I can just edit in a screen cap showing the exact same thing that I'm showing in here. Uh, it won't show exactly because nowadays my the, the graph is going to look different, right? Um, but I should be able to edit that in, at least. Uh, anyway, I'll have to turn this off. Yeah, so left, we don't have to do anything. We can just chop out the top here. I need to zoom in quite a lot to make sure that I don't cut out too much. I want to cut exactly right here. The reason for that is I should, I'm probably going to, does it really matter? I don't think, no, I, it doesn't actually matter that much. I can just go like that. It does have to be, it cannot include the, the stuff behind it though. Now we just have the face cam and I can move this later on to wherever I want. And then I can put in the desktop part uh, that I need over here. By the way, there's no way to zoom in here. You have to do it through this thing over here. Overall, this is this program has been designed by, uh, I don't know, not at least not professional designers. People that actually know what they're doing. Because the, the, any design thing that you see in here, it, it, it's strange. Uh, typing in stream chat is more in talking style instead of article style. Exactly, yeah. I don't blame anyone for typing quickly into a stream chat because for one, this, the stream moves on, right? So you just want to quickly type out your opinion so that um, if, if you were to write out an article and, and on 
or do all of the proper grammar and do all of the proper punctuation, it would take a lot longer for me to see your message. And already with the stream delay that we have, that is uh, would be an even bigger problem. Uh, but in general, yeah, people just chat, right? So they just quickly want to get their opinion out and they want me to see it quickly so they don't really care. And that's normal, and I know that, yeah. Again, I have to do this a little bit off screen because I don't know what I'm allowed to show from YouTube and whatnot. It just fluctuates, which is annoying. So here we are at first four hours, 118 times shown in feed. So this is how many times YouTube tries to get a view from it. This is not the actual viewing number because people tend to skip away as well. I do like that I get around maybe like normal, actually now that of shorts, right? I have the funny ones. I believe I should be worried about how much or here I'm still comparing statistics. Uh, I think this whole thing is also going to be this. See, I can just duplicate it and it will just throw it on the timeline. <laughs> Yeah, no, I want you here. It's going to take a while to actually get the footage needed here. Have you tried DaVinci Resolve? I have tried it. Um, didn't grab my attention or, or it didn't click with me the way that I want uh, the editor to work. I know I say like there's a lot of things that Premiere does wrong, but there are are also some things that it does right in their design. There's, a, it, it's obviously uh, a software that uh, works well enough for me to do my job in it. Uh, the other thing is, as I said before in earlier on in the stream, because I edit or currently I don't do it anymore, but because I used to edit for other YouTubers, uh, I was expected to deliver them with uh, Premiere Pro project files and to collaborate with other editors, uh, send assets back and forth, uh, which are also project files, but full of the, the edits that you do so that they can take the, the edit and then use it in a different video that they are editing, right? The, say that you have a certain transition that they want in their video, uh, because maybe it's part of a series or whatever. Um, you send the project over, with just the transitions and all of the, the lower thirds, the, the texts on screen, uh, borders, all of that kind of stuff, the extra graphics that isn't necessarily the footage, but that is still needed for the video. If there's any form of collaboration between people, you're going to be using the industry standard, which in the video editing world is just Adobe, or uh, yeah, Premiere Pro and um, After Effects and I guess, the, the other one, Audition as well, uh, if you're more into audio editing. So for that reason, I've always stuck with Premiere Pro. It's just the the default, the, the standard that people tend to use. And it's also the one that you'll find the most tutorials on. It's not that you cannot do things in Premiere Pro and that Premiere Pro, um, or that you cannot do things in uh, DaVinci Resolve. It's just that if since I was working in kind of like the industry, it is easier for me to just stick with the default, right? I think I can show this part because there, I believe I should be worried about how much or the money that is on stream. If I show money, not they might not like that. But they, even the ones that are not, I go back in here as well. I might just cut out this whole bit. <laughs> How big of the part of the video is that? That's a major part of the video. Difference between this one, 180 times, this being like... I'll have to record des desktop footage for all of this again. What I'll probably end up doing is just still images, uh, move the camera around, make a still image, and that should be it. Fewer make because they are just a batch of shorts that I get to all edit in one go. Keep making music, brother, we will be there. I okay, so here we need some more text. I forgot some text over here, I guess. Know what to do about it right now. Viewers are back up though. It is going back up. It's, I guess that's the dip that...
uh, here. Okay. And then we can put this here as well, and this will be... Keep making music, brother, we will be there. That's the viewer mentality. This, but I, I'll, I should probably explain what I mean there. I, in this part of the stream, I was complaining about how I lack the understanding of what it takes to actually make proper YouTube videos and why I sometimes I feel like some of the videos that I make which I expect to perform well perform very poorly and the other way around like take that kick drum uh, video that I made recently right I know it's a popular topic but it has currently 16,700 views or something like that whereas my normal videos get 1k views maximum if they do well um, maybe one and a half K sometimes a, a very good video of mine usually gets two K views. Whereas this one video got 16 K. I have no idea how to replicate that. I have no idea what I did. Was it just the topic being good? I don't think it is because I made another video on how to actually make kick drums. Was it the fact that I mentioned kick two in there? Is that for some reason why people were more, more enticed to click on that video? Was the, the title thumbnail combination just very good? Uh, I think the video that I posted yesterday also had a very, very good thumbnail. The one on the wavetable baselines. I thought that that's my best thumbnail yet, to be honest. And I did change its title today. It does seem to be doing fairly well today. Yeah, it's actually doing very well today. Much better than expected. There's no revenue on screen, so I can actually show this. Uh, knowing what I know now, you guys cannot see this part of the screen here. I could do it like this now. Eh? Uh -huh. Now I should be up here somewhere. Yeah. So this one is the... Uh, this is probably where I changed the title this morning. And you can see in with the new title, uh, which is uh, the new way to make your baseline. I should probably maybe exclamation point this. The new way to make your baseline. I do think that this is a, a better title. This is actually a good title. The old title should still be in here. Yeah, wavetable baselines, wavetable basis for side trends explained. This isn't, so this is a good description of the video, but it's not, uh enticing it at the end of the day what a thumbnail and title should do is it should convince you to click on the video or to to tap on the video on your phone so that you start watching the topic it's not necessary that you are that you convince or, or that i describe what is in the video it is more important that i convince you to watch the video in the first place right What I wanted to say with the, the mentality, by the way, the viewer mentality is just continue making good things and uh, good things will come. The problem is, I don't know what good things are. And that may sound a little bit strange. It may sound a little bit odd there. Um, but good things will come. I don't necessarily know how I measure the, the, the quality of my own content, right? Because I now have a piece of content that has a lot of views, but I don't necessarily know yet why. So if I want to do that, if I want those good things to come and I want it to actually be sustainable and I want to actually, you know, grow the channel more than I'm growing now, which is the end goal, um, then I would need to find out how to do that. Mirror, how are you doing? Welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well. Um, okay, so we're done with this one.
uh, I just need to put in the outro thing. And then we can do topics and all of that stuff and make the, the timestamps and whatnot. Okay. Uh, the first, I, th this wasn't the one that I moved the topics around, no? No, okay, yeah, so this is release news, this is 0010, do we actively listen to music, is 0109, time is over here, by the way, that's, I'm looking at finding where in the video the topics are so that I can put in timestamps at the beginning. Uh, you have to learn more clickbaity. I am a little bit scared about doing more clickbaity titles, even though right now it seems to be working. At the end of the day, the feedback that I get from you guys, voc um, it's kind of like Valve. You guys know the, the game company that makes also Counter-Strike? They gave a talk about uh, map design and how a specific map... Uh, they said the, the players were complaining about how CT-sided the map is. So that meant that one side of the, the, the game had bigger advantage on this particular map than another side of the game. And then Valve went into their internal data for how many rounds were won for the CT side versus the, the T side um, on that particular map. And they said, uh, like, it, it's 50-50, right? So the, the, the input that I get from you guys, and, and that's the same for me, the input that I get from you guys is that each and every one of you that I ask about clickbaity titles hates clickbaity titles. So I'm fearing to do clickbaity titles because I, I'm scared that if I start using a little bit more clickbait, that you guys will start uh, start to walk away from the channel and say, this is not what I'm interested in. I don't want to be baited into watching his videos. I just want to watch his videos. That being said, now that I changed the title to more clickbaity one, the video is doing better. So it the data is telling me you guys actually like that. You guys actually click more or, or you watch more if I make the title more clickbaity. So I might experiment more with that in the future. Uh, I'm doing great so far. Had no time to produce and first exams are in two weeks. As long as I can listen to your sick music, I'll be fine. Perfect. My music is perfect to study to, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I never used to listen to Psytrance back when I was studying. If you're honest, they will come. I am ex... Yeah, the, the one thing that I always keep in mind is that whenever I do clickbait somebody, I want to deliver on the bait, right? So now is the new way to make uh, your baseline. This is actually a new way for many people to make your baseline. Not a lot of people are implementing wavetable baselines in their day-to-day -day production. I do know a few people. I know Mind B does wavetable stuff because he also has a wavetable package for baselines um it's on on his gum road as well it's just i believe just 10 static wavetables so single cycle waveforms and up tables where you can morph between settings like mine is um but still he also has a package so i believe he also does his baselines and wavetable um I do think it's just more beneficial. And I actually think that it's, yes, it is it is a new way of doing it. So I do believe that I'm also delivering on the promise of the clickbait, essentially. Yeah, there is clickbaity and then there's pure clickbait where the thing you clicked on uh, for totally isn't there. Exactly, yeah. You sometimes see that with articles where they use like celebrities and stuff like that and they'll take like embarrassing things like leaked nudes or um, they said this controversial thing or whatever and then you go in the article and it's just not there. It is like the celebrity talked about 
having her nudes leaked instead of actually having her nudes leaked. It's usually a she where it happens to, right? Uh, or or instead of saying something controversial, they liked a tweet that was maybe slightly controversial and even then misinterpreted and whatever. That there's a lot of people that indeed just go to a point where it's it's just not there, right? The the content that you clicked for it is not there. I don't think that I ever want to get to that point. I think that that's just in general a bad idea because. It may work in the short term, but it will probably not work in the long term. Um, I wish Ableton had this shortcut. How long have you been making side trends? I took it seriously from the... How long have I been making side trends? Let's see where I can find that text. It's probably going to be a lot later in the stream. Uh, this is still the, the connection stuff here. Or is this one of the ones that I actually moved, maybe? No. Let me just get the chat all the way to the end, see. Oh, here it is. Found it. Sometimes I spend more time looking for the text that I want to copy than just I would have spent if I just typed it out. How long have you been making side runs? That looks good. Okay. How long have you been making side runs? I uh, it should probably start leaving here ish. Like that. Um, exactly. Put on a surprise face with your hands on your mouth and point at something. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I am starting to use my face as a thumbnail sometimes specifically with the the conversations for projector series that is how i want to kind of distinguish that series from any tutorial that was at least the plan on uh back when i posted them on the main channel uh, again for those that don't know the videos that i'm currently editing is the the conversations with projector slightly new format in that they are going to be shorter 20 minute videos and they're going to be uploaded on a different channel uh i have the channel in here somewhere let me just get that so that you guys can see the channel as well it will be uploaded on the also projector channel which is a channel that i started specifically for this and other personal videos that aren't tutorials so this is just my <laughs> normal Projector logo, but inverted, and it looks scary. <laughs> very, very scary. It looks like some kind of ominous demon. I did brighten it up a little bit more, or or darkened it a little bit more for it to to work. Um, but this is the same kind of idea as my experimenter SoundCloud page, where it, it's all of the stuff that isn't necessarily purely projector brand. Let's say. Uh, so this channel over here, I'll quickly link it for anyone that is interested in the conversations with projector series. I hope that by having the conversations with Projector on a different channel that they will find uh, that my main channel will have more success because there isn't a series dragging down the videos and that um, my conversations with Projector will find their own unique audience because they are on the Projector channel as opposed to the main channel. Alien Projector, yes, exactly. That was the goal. That is what I went for. I took it seriously from the beginning of the pandemic and I've been making it, I guess, a little over a year longer than that. But before that, I, I've, I've been making music to some extent. It's evil alter ego. Yes. The first eight. Okay.
I do wavetable base when it works. Sometimes it doesn't work, then I resample. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. If it works, it works, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. For me, I am 100% a wavetable guy. <laughs> What's up with my project? Gotta love that moment. Yeah. Okay, I think I saw that before. What's now the original message is a little bit different, but uh, you'll see why I didn't say it like that. The WTF. Uh, I've learned to start filtering myself. Uh, I think this is the time where you can see why. Here I start to read the message. You can you can see the exact moment when I stop scratching my head is when I start reading the message, I guess. Or maybe even earlier here. This is where I start to process, okay, what do I need to say? It says WTF. I don't want to say WTF on stream. That's that doesn't really it doesn't really have to do anything, right? It, it's not really the, the, the most professional. So I I read out the message and then I process in my head, okay, what do I need to do? And then I say out the message in the different way. <laughs> Very evil. Iced tea with a kilo of sugar. Yes. <laughs> Imagine the April Fool's video on that one is well. I've already done the first step. Uh, that is uh, making the bottles dirty <laughs> instead of cleaning them out like it was in that video. Um, how long have I been? Streaming. It's been three hours. Um, I do have to go to the toilet, so I just for that reason I'm going to take a break. Otherwise, I would probably finish this video. It's is it really just one more edit in here? Is there? I mean, if it's one more edit, I'll I'll finish it here. No interaction with my chat whatsoever in this part. That's funny. Uh, this goes there. Like the name reminds me that perception is what you yourself place on reality. Ah, I guess this is the one where I explain my backstory. That's why this one is so long as well. Uh huh. So this is going to be, I think this this projector or this conversation with projector will be a very good one because this is where I explain the backstory of my name and when I started making music. Did it just, ah. Hmm. I like the name, reminds me that perception is what you yourself place on reality i guess my pronunciation is right there's just a pause in there and i know how to deal with pauses we can just delete them i like the name reminds me that perception is what you yourself place on reality the projector name you want to know how i got the projector it's still not the best the way that i say it but i'm I think it's good enough. The, one of the things that I'm scared of is if I put too many text to speeches in it, that it's it's going to be distracting. Right at the end of the day, it's it's my channel. I should be the one that should be speaking out the questions. That is how a normal chat with a stream would go. Uh, but if you if I start using text to speech for everything. I think it will become very unpersonal. It's, it doesn't really sound good. Also, text-to-speech on stream is usually uh, connected to donations, which in this case, none of these are. Right? It's not like this message is actually popping up during the stream. I edit this in later. But normally, that is what you would see. And I don't, I don't think that I want to give that perception that I'm getting mad stacks from all of you guys' donations when that's not true. There's no benefit in me actually doing that. Did I do the mask on this one? No. 
now I'm scared that I didn't do the first one either. I did do that one. Okay, perfect. Okay, uh, so this one should be finished. This was a quick edit. Uh, we have to do the topics now. So... 0010, I wish Ableton had this shortcut. And... Uh, 0, 0055, uh, when did I start making Psytrance? Uh, 144. I called it clicky issues initially, but a a production full of confusion is a better title for that one. Uh, 0144. Uh, my thoughts on the new a isotope trash is at 0.5.0.2 here. And then I have 0.6.52 over here. How I got my name and how I got into production. This is a very long explainer. This is like a story time. <laughs> kind of thing. It's just me explaining m my whole life up until the... <laughs> in terms of production, at least. Um, anyway, with that one finished, uh, means that we have finished four episodes in terms of the, this, all of the assets and stuff that need to be in there. Um, that's... Pretty decent progress. I mean, it's not a lot faster than I usually edit, but uh, it's decent enough. I did forget to update here the thing, I think. The intro card. Yeah. This is still the old one. How about this one? I don't remember doing this. Yeah, this is still how conversations with projector started. Which, by the way, should be 0, 010 on that one. Does that mean I have to subtract 5 seconds from every thing here? No. It's just because the first one... I guess it, it should be like that, okay. And this one I think I did. Yes. Okay, so now I have the, the, the all of the assets in there for the first four videos. Uh, the whole speaking part and the, the finalizing part I'm not going to do on stream because I have no idea how I would stream me speaking into the the, the microphone for this uh, and doing the scripting and all of that. Uh, I don't think I would be comfortable even sharing that on stream. Uh, that being said, I think it's time for me to take another quick break so that I can uh, quickly go to the toilet. And then we'll continue working on this one. This should be a little bit more of an interesting one. I see a lot more colors in here, so that should be nice. Um, let me quickly find a track here. Oh, I know what I can do. Instead of playing the track in here, I can again use the mix. I'm no longer getting it recommended to me. It used to be always the very first thing in my recommended. But now... Uh, Eclipse. Here. Yeah, I can play tracks like this and just show them with the visuals and that may make my break a little bit more interesting. So, I can just play it like this, essentially. I'm going to take a quick break. I'll be like 5 to 10 minutes-ish, uh, probably when this track is finished, knowing my timing. Um, and then I'll be back. And in the meanwhile, you guys have some music to listen to, some great visuals to watch. If you're not already subscribed to the Eclipse Sound Syndicate channel, make sure that you do. We're almost, uh, or we're getting close to 1,000 subscribers, which is what we need for monetization. 
We're also getting very close to the watch time that we actually need, just because this mix, as you can see, is popping off with 10k views right now, which is really nice. Um, but yeah, I'll be back very, very soon, and then we'll just continue editing. And um, yeah, I now have this cool way to go into the break.
see signs of alien civilizations. <laughs> Okay. As you can see, I cannot fully trust the <laughs> stream deck yet. I still need to open OBS every once in a while. Here's a little sneak preview for uh, our upcoming track, which is releasing in five days. Another reason for you guys to subscribe to the Eclipse Sound Syndicate channel. Uh, this is uh, a Mind B. As you can see, it's ID here. Uh, I'm not going to share the title, but you guys have to see when it releases. I like this track. Yeah, whoever made it is, is indeed very talented. Very good producer. Um, anyway, I just heard from my friends that we, instead of meeting at 10, we will be meeting at 9. So my plans to stream another hour uh, aren't going to come to fruition. Um, it's probably good that I end the stream here then, so that I have some time to eat before I meet my friends. Um, so, it's a little bit unfortunate. I was hoping to do another hour of just chilling with you guys and chatting. To be honest, I did really like today's stream. It's not going to do well in terms of numbers, but sometimes you don't, or sometimes you shouldn't care about the numbers and you should just do what you want. I don't know how many more times I will do this. I'll, I might do this more if you guys say, like, this is the kind of content that we enjoy. Um, I just wanted to try it out. I wanted to get some work done on the editing. Um, of course, tomorrow there will be another stream. I'll be doing my usual feedback stream again at 5 o'clock. So I hope that you guys will be there disconnected for me. <laughs> I, I love that the stream crashed during the time where I said that I had to go away. It, just, it was like, oh, you know, don't want to stream anymore? Okay, here you go. <laughs> it's the first time an OBS crash was, or an OBS disconnect was actually warranted. <laughs> I wasn't entirely finished with my outro. Hopefully, next week or so, I have some time to make like outros and intros and uh, maybe even a proper break uh, scene for my stream. That way I can 
switch even easier between them with the, the Stream Deck. I just got it today, um, so I'm still experimenting with it. I already feel like I can consolidate the break and the way that I'm plugging off my microphone. There are currently two buttons, but they don't have to be that way. I can probably set that up to be one button so that when I switch to the break, it turns off the side chaining on the microphone and the microphone itself. Um, and then once I get back, it turns them back on again. I also want to maybe already change the layout a little bit, have my main three things up top. Because currently I have my Ableton scene on top, my Reaper scene right next to that. And uh, then I have the break scene right next to that. And then below it is the full cam. So the full cam is like this, where it's, it's, it's just me. And then I have the, the Ableton one, the Reaper one, right? So I can switch between that. Um, timing, happy 420, enjoy your night. It's not going to be 420 related, uh, what I'm doing tonight, but I'll just be having some drinks with my friends. I'll probably still celebrate it. Although, having said that, I realized that the real celebration should have happened early this morning. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm going to end it. I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. Let me know if you want more editing stuff or, or just chill uh, conversation stuff. I do have to do one thing, though. I have to respond to this thing over here. This has to make it into a conversation because somebody actually suggested it. Uh, Hello, Projector. I've been trying my hand at music production for a year now, and I love your ultimate sidelines video. In the video, you tackle the concept of multiband crossover filters and what they do. I also understand that multiband compression is somewhat uh, the same or similar. With that in mind, what is the difference between multiband crossover filter and multiband compressor? Referring to your ultimate guide to Sidetrans timestamp here. Uh, so this is the, the ultimate guide to Sidetrans kick and bass. Uh, do you know of alternatives to M Dynamics MB that allow you, the user to accomplish the same goal, EA Pro MB or Ozone Dynamics? From what I understand of the explanation, we are simply separating the frequencies and gluing them back together to create different phase in the baseline. Can this same technique be achieved inside uh, of the Pro MB or other plugins like it? Thanks again, Projector, for the amazing and informative and funny, uh, uh, amazing informative videos and funny shorts. I almost got that in one take. <laughs> I was so happy with like, oh, I, I just am explaining everything properly here. Um, but no, at the end there, I just messed up. When it comes to multiband, when it comes to multiband crossover filter, what that means is that this is the filter here, right? The multiband part, as you can see, even in the interface, in this case, is separated from the actual processing that you apply. So the multiband dynamics is going to have the same phasing effect as, uh, let, let's take a different plugin. Let's, do I have any multiband plugins that aren't uh, Melda? I'm, yeah, I do, I do, I do. So say that I have, uh, where is it? Vitamin. These two crossovers, as long as the Q factor and the steepness are the same, the steepness is the, the dB per octave of the filter, how, how quickly does it, roll off how quickly does it filter down uh, i can show that in here as well uh, this is 12 db per octave filter this is a 48 db per octave filter you can see that it, it's doing the same kind of filtering right and that it, it just shapes off the high end it just does this in a, a steeper way it, it goes down quicker so with the higher frequencies get turned down more around the crossover whereas here it kind of bleeds into the higher frequencies. There will still be a little bit of 10K left, whereas over here it isn't. Um, you guys cannot see because I'm stupid. When it comes to crossover filters, this is the crossover filter, right? You can see that it's separated in the interface. In uh, This is the, the, the crossover part, and here you have the actual processing that is applied to each band. So here you'll have some kind of compression. Here you have a different compression for this band. The process that you see over here, the processing that is applied to each band is 
independent from the band itself. Uh, the, the, and what we're doing with, with Psytrance is really just setting the crossover filter. So anything that has a crossover filter, as long as the settings are the same in the, the, the slope of it and in the Q factor, which for crossover filters you cannot change, uh, I believe. So if the, the, the slope is the same, then you're going to be okay. Then you're going to be good. Then it's the same. So this is also a plugin that has crossover filters. You can see, you can set the filters over here. Uh, it's a little bit wonky the way that it moves around. But if I match the frequency of these crossover filters and the steepness of these crossover filters, uh, say that they're 12 dB per octave, I don't exactly know what crossover they are. Maybe with a little bit of experimentation, I can find out. As long as no processing is applied in either, they will result in the same phase shifting. That is because most plugins use the same algorithm for filtering. Uh, chat, spam now, we have permission to spam. Yes, exactly. I think we're not supposed to see that. We can't, yeah, you are supposed to see it. So, um, so yeah, when it comes to the, the crossover filters, I, I just realized that even my explanation here, <laughs> I didn't actually show the text. Uh, I, I might edit around that if this ever goes into the conversations part. <coughs> to be honest, it feels like I just messed this up completely. I might tackle this again tomorrow. I think I'll do that because it feels like <laughs> I'll, I'll have to edit a lot around the way that I explained it now. Um, and I might redo this tomorrow. What is your best tip for be better at self-learn sound design? Do it. Do more sound design. What I used to do back when I started the YouTube channel is for a month I did follow one tutorial and then instead of just saying, okay, he is setting this frequency, right? If he you open a, a plugin, okay, he's setting this frequency to 155. Or, or he's setting the release to 155, he's setting the attack to 20, he is setting the ratio to maybe like around 4, he's setting the threshold to, to this level. I would try to rationalize with myself why those decisions were made. Why not minus 18? Why not minus 11? What is the reason that he sets the, the setting the way that he sets it? And what does that do for the sound? And you can just write that down. If you have like a, a, a notebook like I have over here, one of these big things here where you can just write down a lot of text you can write down okay i made this sound i follow this tutorial this setting is set to this point because it does this this setting is set to that point because it does that right um i'm lost to be fair it's because of the lack of recent production <laughs> yeah just just doing it just just training yourself every day and i did that for a month every day i would follow one tutorial make one sound and not so much focus on just following the tutorial, but focusing on trying to extract as much information from it as possible and really trying to study that. For anybody who has done university, they will know like how you would study, especially recently. Ever since COVID, I think a lot of people will know because a lot of lessons have gotten to video format, right? Uh, in that they're, they're, they were distance learning and that kind of stuff. Uh, and you would either have a Zoom meeting or a, a you would be sent a video of the lecture. When you're studying with those things, uh, it, it, it can be really hard to become complacent and say, oh, I can just watch the video and learn that way. You don't really learn that way. The way that you learn is through, as I said, writing things down in a notebook like this, because writing actually puts it in your memory. So if you're just sitting here, YouTube video to the side, and you're just moving buttons to match the settings that he has in the video and doing like this, 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 and this, you don't learn anything, right? You have to write down exactly, okay, this setting is set to this knob. Why is it set there? Write those two things down, and then you'll learn that bit of information. And as long as you do that for maybe, say, a month, you'll be good at sound design. That's it. Like, there's not much more to it. 
Obviously, it's going to kind of depend on the sounds that you, you choose and the tutorials that you choose. They have to have some implication on sidetrans if you're learning it for sidetrans, if you're learning a different genre. It doesn't really make sense to learn a lot of sidetrans sound design if you're making, I don't know, drum and bass, because it requires slightly different techniques, slightly different ways of manipulating the sounds. But yeah, the, to be honest, that is the way that I learned it. Uh, that being said, I had eight, nine years of production experience under my belt when I started that. And a lot of that experience was also sound designing, but not sound designing side trends, I would say. It was sound designing dubstep or uh, mainly like lead sounds for uh, big room and, and house and stuff like that. It was different sound design, but still sound design that I used to do. Um, so I already had some experience. Uh, but I, I felt like after a month, I was like, okay, now I'm confident in my sound design and I feel like I can make a lot more tutorials and stuff like that because that's the reason why I did it. I wanted to learn sound design so that I could, whenever I got a request for a specific sound, I could say, okay, I, I will just make this sound and let me just quickly make it, make the video, and then I'll push out the video. I no longer do those videos. Uh, I've explained why, uh, but the main reason is I don't want to contribute to people copying other artists. And I felt like that was the only thing that people were getting from that. Just give me the sound. I don't want to learn anything. I want to have the sound and get the views that the artist is getting because I use the same sound. Therefore, I get the same views. <laughs> Obviously, that's not how it works. And I also don't want to contribute to a culture where we just steal ideas from other artists. I would like to contribute to a culture where people create their own unique ideas, their own unique uh, sounds, I guess. So that's what I've been doing recently with my content. For those wondering why I no longer do those videos. Um, but yeah, I have to go. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow again. Same time, same place. And I hope you enjoyed the stream. This time I'll, I'll go for real. And I'll do that, that whole conversation with Projector for tomorrow. Again, for those that are wondering, you can continue adding topics to here. It doesn't have to be as elaborate as this. You can maybe just ask me a question. Q&A, whatever, uh, and you can just write in here and I'll go through the topics and, and actually have, you know, a little bit of a prepared thing that I can explain. Anyway, bye-bye.